I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the R&B Money Podcast. The authority on all things R&B. Oh, my God. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, rub, I don't do my Birdman hands too often. Yeah, right. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't rub them together too often, you know, because, you know, I'm kind of legendary. But when the legend, the legendary gets deeper than my legendary... Oh, man. Ooh, stop it. Get yeah, yeah, stop yeah, it. Stop yeah, yeah. it. Just don't listen to <laughs> what people say. They don't know about, about you and me. <laughs> Get it out your mind. It's jealousy. Okay. They don't know about this here. This man said that. You make some noise for Mr. John B. <laughs> yes, the sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Appreciate you, bro. The building. Tank. First of Jay. all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know what I mean? Thank you. Thank bro. you so much. I remember <laughs> I remember back in the day listening to um one of my favorite artists of all time, Babyface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember a record coming on. And I'm like, man, Babyface done added a little <laughs> Yeah. Added a little stank to his vocal. Yeah. And they're like, that's not baby face. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, that first one we wanted to, we wanted to, you know, kind of play with them, play with them a little bit. <laughs> Listen, and when we saw when they saw you. That video. <laughs> that video. Them girls was like, yes, he is. I said, you know what? <laughs> All black women they said, yes, uh... he is. Yes, he is. Um, you've been killing for a long time, man. Like, what we like to do is we like to start at the very beginning. Yeah. Like, you know, from the first time you felt like or somebody told you that you had something. You know what I'm saying? Because these mm -hmm. gifts for us start early. They start in church and they start yeah. in all these other places. Mm -hmm, yeah. And so we wanna we wanna go down memory lane, get get some real history on you, and yeah. then we wanna get into the the nuances of, of of the wins and the losses. Right. On. You know what I'm saying? As, as you up. as you continue. Yeah. To take this journey. For sure. So at the beginning, when did when did you know? Or when did somebody tell you? I think it was the eighth grade talent show. Talk about it. Eighth, eighth talent grade show. talent show <laughs> at Elliott Junior High. You know, I'm performing, you know, first of all, to be able to make it into the talent show, to audition and, you know, to to get chosen to be, okay, you're good. Let's we wanna see you. You made it. So now here's your chance. Boom, you're on stage, you're performing in front of your friends for the first time, all your friends are kinda Okay, that's what's up. You, John kind of can sing, or, you know. So mm -hmm. it was the first time that I ever really had that that sense of fearlessness mm -hmm. on on stage. That this is what I do, and I'm happy to share it with you guys. But it's really not about what you think, because I'm up here because I love this. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was the first time ever getting to flex, really. You know. Yeah. And so you have been singing though. I have been singing and playing. So I was programming all my songs on this. You know, this keyboard that basically was like a workstation, you know, and I could just record everything. I had like a little four track. So I was making demos fully, like, you know, by the time I was in middle like, school. High school. Well, at the end of uh, my eighth grade year is when I started to really, really produce. Yeah, I was basically my, my eighth grade year was when I started making my first demos. That's dope. Yeah, That's yeah. Dope. So by ninth grade, I was fully. Into so who gets you the studio? So my, my pops loaned me the money. To do it, loaned it to you. Yeah, he loaned. He told me you're gonna pay me every single. Time. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, at at sure. what age? Now, so this was probably around 13, 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thir no, you're like, I need 12, a studio. 12, yeah. I need, I need a workstation. Well, I was basically like every. See, I come from a family of musicians. Okay. And so for like gifts, you know, every maybe three or four years, they would say, "What do you, you know, what do you, what are you into now? As far as your music, what do you?" What are you trying to do? And I'd say, I don't really want to do the drum set. You know, I'd say, it's too loud. No, can't have the drum set in the house. But he thought, you know, let me go ahead and take one step. I hear, you know, he sees me trying to sound the chords out on the piano and trying to, you know, because my mom's a piano teacher. So was, I was always like watching her and just kind of, I wanted to teach myself though. So I was playing by ear 
And he saw that. He said, let me buy him his keyboard. So he got me my first little Casio guy. You know nice what I mean? Stuff. And that was how I kind of cut my teeth with playing, you know, trying but to make songs. But you're you're in the house with a piano teacher, but you don't want lessons. Didn't want lessons. I wanted okay. to hear, you know, okay. I wanted to hear the, what I wanted to play. Because it wasn't, I wasn't being taught. Like, if I was going to study with somebody, they weren't teaching me how to play the way I wanted they to want play. You want you know? of course. So I was learning by listening to, like, you know, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and, mm -hmm. and Babyface, you know what I mean? And, and the songs that they were writing with New Edition and Bobby Brown and all this. I was of playing these chords, trying to figure out how to play them at least. So, yeah, but, um, the you know, the eighth grade, you know, making all those demos and playing it for my friends and getting their approval, I think that was really what made me kind of go all out. You know, by ninth grade, I really didn't want to do it on my own, so I started forming these groups, these R&B groups. I was like... We, I swear we were Color Me Bad before Color Me Bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> right, I mean right. we had a black guy, a Filipino guy, and me. You know, oh, it was yeah, like yeah. United Nations. Yeah. And it was it was got it was it was a it was a blessed situation. We were harmony. You know, it was um, my first time really even having like a group of guys I went to church with. You know, found, you know found you know what the church vibes was and the gospel choir and getting into gospel choir and um, in high school joining the gospel choir, I think that's really what pushed me vocally yeah. forward was um, they were like, all right, you know, John, come out, you know, come out that throat, and get get into that chest, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You showed me a lot about that. Like, yeah. we, we, you know that, yeah, I've so. told you that, uh -huh. you know. Um, it's it's so much influence in this game, you know, that has taught me so much. I'm a, I'm a fan of this music, I'm a study, you know, I'm, I study this music um, with, a, with a passion and, uh, and a love for it, you know. It's a true love for for what I do and for what other, others do. It's it's no really getting it wrong. It's just like certain stuff you love a little bit more than others, yeah. you know. And I, I want to go back and touch on yeah. something you said when you said, you know, where as, as we as he, Jake uh, jumped into not having the lessons. Oh yeah, yeah and yeah. because they weren't teaching you, you know, the music in a way that made you feel like you were learning the things you were hearing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, I was I was in the same boat where, you know, they would try to send me to this music teacher who was trying to have my hands resting on middle C. And I'm like, I'm like, but y'all don't hear what Chucky Booker is doing right. with today? <laughs> the teacher like, didn't know who Chucky, like, you who Chucky, know, Chucky Booker was. You don't know who Chucky Booker is. <laughs> yeah, right, uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't hear what the Mississippi Mass Choir just did with, like, you don't, that's that's not in here. Right. Yeah. Right? And and so with, with teaching music at that point still being so structured and you having to come from a classical foundation, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I love what what's happening today. Like, we have... I'm actually teaching um, my son and my daughter. They learn the piano. Beautiful. But they're learning things that they want to learn. Nice. Right? And so they're learning theory from, you know, the Harry Potter song mm -hmm. or, <laughs> you know, from the Spider-Man song mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. And they're, they're, that's how they're learning right. their theory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, but when we were growing up, nobody was teaching theory like that. Mm -mm. The mm -mm. songs that you heard, nobody was saying, well, let me show you what that looks like on here because that would have been a that approach right there would have sent us into a completely different space yeah you know what i'm saying and understanding how to really like we can play yeah you know what i'm saying we have our ear and we can feel and all of those things but if we could score it oh yeah right you like, know, you know do you know crazy. tim carmen i've heard of that name tim carmen is amazing. uh yeah. tim carmen is nothing short of amazing he was eric clapton's md for the longest probably okay, still yeah. is yeah yeah but Tim Carmen can feel it, he can read it, yeah, and he can write it. Yeah, it's amazing, man. He's a, I mean, it's, and it's very, it's rare very that guys rare. can do both. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, I, I, I kind of strayed away from being taught stuff mm -hmm. because I kind of, I was, um, I had a really short attention span for, mm -hmm. for, um, for learning things. It was much more of a hands-on type of person, and let me. You know, I started, my first chord was a fifth. Um, and so I would go probably like middle C or something like that, you know, in a G and just kind of combine those and kind of go all up and down. You know, probably I was five, six years old when I was doing this. Mm -hmm. And so in combinations of different, you know, fifths. And so, dun, 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 dun. you know, and these were my first ways of being, I was five years old. Mm -hmm. And so they watched me and they said, 
We can't show you how to do that. That's something that we can't show you how to do. Improvisation is not something that you can really teach somebody. It. It's like, it's, it's just, it's like having the charisma as an actor as well. You yeah. know, like you yeah. can't be shown that. I mean, you can see somebody act and do a really great job and say, yeah, like that. But in terms of being shown, okay, this is how you show charisma. It's like, when you see it kind of comes from just, inside, it doesn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You see Will, it just looks, Brad Pitt, it just, yeah, right. just yeah. different. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's a trip because no one showed me how to, how to come from inside like that. It was more, I feel like, um, if that was a secret on um, how did they do that? I wanted to reverse engineer how they, they did it. So my, my whole thing was having templates for songs that were my favorite songs and trying to approach the music the same way. Like, how did that, okay, let me find that chord. Now that I got that chord, where's that sound come from? I, I got a sound that's similar. Now, where's that bass sound? Oh, what's the snare? That's the snare sound? Let me, let me sample that snare. Yeah, yeah, you know, it just, yeah. it, you just kind of like, you learn to, I learned to try to uh, really personify the people that I, I, I admired so much. And that's kind of the reason why we, you know, we went so hard, well, I went so hard with them, showing the influence that Babyface had for me, I mean, for, on me, because of- um, don't, go, don't go there yet. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but yeah, I mean that's what you yeah, you know you yeah, brought that up yeah. originally with me sounding just like him on that that uh that someone to love record. So that's that's really the main thing is to be able to come so far, having so much admiration for the art, but not only the art, the people who are the the best at doing it yeah. at the you know at the time yeah. creating yeah. it. You're paying the most attention to them. Yeah. It's like that's your dream list of people that you want to get to, and then you you make that move and. It's not even that you think that it's not gonna happen. It's just more like, I gotta make that happen. Yeah. That's somebody I have to. So meet. was so, so was that before you get to that? Yeah. I, did you win the contest? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, I did that. win. Yeah, come I, on. I, 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 I know it's so crazy. Know. This is what's know so know crazy won. about when you said Chucky Booker. Guess who was the the talent show judges? Pasadena's own troop, the group Troop. Oh, no yeah, way. Was produced by Chucky Booker. Not my yes, little yeah, spread oh my, my wings. Yeah. Spread my wings. Yeah. 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 Come on, man. So, you know, they were there. They were, I remember they all had white on and they're all sitting there and like, I'm, I'm performing in front of them. I'm just like, okay, I, I'm feeling good, right? And he's like, all right, the, the winner of best vocal performance is Jonathan. <laughs> That's crazy. That's dope. Dope. So, your first contest, yeah. middle school, yeah. judged by. Troop. troop. The legendary. The, the legendary yeah. troop. The very That's polished. And we're, polished. and we're from the same town. I'm from yeah, Pasadena. Yeah, Pasadena. So, you know what I'm saying? It was really special to, to have that in, in, you know, in my archive of memories, you know, as far as just something I could pull back. I, every time I see Steve Russell, mm -hmm. you know, I'm um, just like, man, come on. You were the first one to really believe wow. in me, man. You know what I mean? So even before Babyface, I, I, I appreciate you. Best. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so now you have, now you're making demos. Mm -hmm. Now you got groups. You got a championship. <laughs> you got a championship. <laughs> <laughs> like you shaking and moving in terms of your development. Now, when do you get that first look or that first call from you know this this place that's getting ready to become a major? Yeah. How do you get to Babyface? Yeah. Like what, what are these steps? I was I was um, my senior year. Well, you know I hadn't really I was recording and producing and building up my um my you know my my archives every all my music um and I was also producing local talent around the area so I had kind of built my name up in the industry in terms of being somebody who was you know up and coming and you know you should got here this guy's got tracks you know what I mean he writes and produces his own stuff and he sings and so you know I was I was dropping my my you know CD and cassette at the time off um at Motown, MCA, at Warner Brothers, and I had some interests brewing. So, you know, you kind of get that buzz at A&R, get to talking and different people start get to talking. So you kind of, you hear from people. Um, I had a guy who was helping me kind of walk my music around. And I remember I was still in high school. I was still in my senior year of high school. And I was checking myself out of class because I was 18. So I was like, all right, I gotta go, you know, I'm officially, you know, an adult now, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I signed myself out of class and I go straight down to Hollywood and I'm like, I walk into this little hole in the wall office um, because they told me, you know, they wanted to hear my music. And um, it, 
his baby face, but it, it wasn't the face. It was actually his his new label that he was going to try to do with his wife called Ed, Edmonds Record Group. So yeah, so they they heard it and it was a it was a rap. I mean, it was like as soon as he heard the music, he he was like, "Is that you?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's that's my voice." You know, that's that's I did all the music. I wrote, you know. You know, programmed the drums, played the chords, did the bass line, arranged the backgrounds. The whole thing, it's all me. And he was just like, he's like, you, you're trying to be an artist? And I was like, no, 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 no. Oh, you didn't go in there I, to be I, an artist. I, I, I said, I said, not necessarily. I was like, I, I, I'm not trying to be famous. I was like, I, I just want to be a part of what you do. Can I be on... You just want to be on the staff. I was like, can I be on the staff? I was like, can I be a Daryl Simmons? Can I be a Kale? Can I be a, I saw these names, you know what I mean, on the credits. I was like, I just want to be one one of the team, you know? Yeah, listen, kids, there used to be this thing. It's called credits. (laughs) 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 Called album notes. Um, I know you guys just download things. Now you don't know who the fuck wrote the songs. But we used to actually buy the CDs and open them up. We look at the pictures. We look who... Who, whoever they were thanking, yeah. you're like, oh, that's probably his girlfriend, the way he said that. Right, uh, <laughs> right, 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 right. wrote the songs. Yeah, yeah, producers. And oh, that's, right. like, an for you to go in there and yeah. mention other amazing writers to him, mm-hmm. like, that doesn't even really happen now. I was so excited to meet, like, people that I had had so much admiration for. I met Dwayne Riggins from Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. At Motown, he was working as an A&R at the time and I dropped my CD and stuff. He was really into it. I met Benny Medina, wow. who, you know, is yeah. infamous yeah. in the yeah. industry. Of course. Um, and he was really trying to sign me. I mean, he, You was he meeting was, all the legends. So yeah. it, it was crazy. It was, it ended up being a bidding war between Benny and, and, and uh, Sony Epic and Babyface. Well, you know, it was like uh-huh. his, his label over at Epic. But I knew, you know, my heart was with working with the people that I wanted, I had always wanted to get with, you know, as far as not only just Babyface, but everyone that he has worked with, like Tony Braxton, I mean, the list goes on. So yeah, my, one of my first things, he said, put a list together, everybody that you want to produce. And I want to see the list. So so I was like, after seven, new edition, coming back, all these people, Tony Braxton, he literally put me in the studio within, you know, a year or two um, with every single one of those groups. And I was able to produce records for all of those people. No way. Yeah, man. TLC. I mean, that's incredible. So, yeah, it was really, really, uh, I mean, the first year of my, of my career in 95, I had toured the entire world. I went on a world tour. I went to all the way Southeast Asia. I went down to you know, <laughs> went to Europe, all of, you know. And you so went with Face. I didn't go with Face. I went as a Sony Epic artist, and they, they wanted me to be is this, an international artist. Is this artist. before the record? Or this piece before? is after. This okay. is okay. right after um, Someone to love. love had come out and Pretty Girls, the single. Okay, let's go backwards then. Yeah, yeah, right on. <laughs> What's the first record that you and Face did together? Was that Someone, Someone to Love? love. That was the first one. First record. Actually, the first song, I believe, was um, Pretty Girl. We recorded that first. Another hit. Um, okay. But, yeah, but, it was, okay. <laughs> but it was just recorded first. Um, and I, I couldn't believe when, you know, I called him. He's like, I got something I, I, got, I got in mind for you. Check it out. And so he played it over the phone. And then he just started to sing the melody for me. And he the lyrics he had to the first verse. And I was just like. Oh my God, that's my song. Like, yeah. Well, and it's the yeah. keyboard that I'm used to hearing, you know, on all of his. Yeah, and all the stuff. Yeah, all yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah, DX yeah, roads, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm just so hype. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is for me. You know, I was a big fan of Tevin Campbell too, you know? Yeah. So, like, all of his production. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, so his production was was all Babyface at that time. Can We Talk, Big Record, I'm Ready, all that was, was Kenny. Mm-hmm. So, this kind of had that same that same swag to it, you know, um, for me. It was a really romantic, sexy record, but it was minimal. There wasn't a lot to the track. It was, I was really surprised on how simple the track was, you know. Almost remind me of like Prince, the way the drums, we had the drums was like, mm-hmm. like some old yeah. Prince type shit. Yeah. But if anybody that knows Face or Kenny, our baby Face or, you know, all of those, all those yeah. things, <laughs> he's very heavily 
influenced by Prince. Yeah. He loves Prince. Oh, yeah. Red Light Special. Yeah, he Are you loves Prince. He, like, he loves that's Prince. That's a Prince record. Red yeah. Light Special. That's what I was waiting when I was, you know, I watched Kenny work with Michael Jackson, so I seen that happen. But I really, and that was incredible. No, so. we're, not, we're not just going to. But, yeah, but yeah. we're not just going to jump over that, though. You but, just, wait, wait, wait. But wait, wait, I'm saying, wait, wait, I, I wait, never wait. saw Prince and, and Babyface work together. No, that would have been incredible. Okay, okay. But wait, right. you were there. <laughs> During the Michael Jackson <laughs> Babyface sessions, um, actually, I was living with Kenny at at his house. He had me move into his house when I first signed to him. He's yeah. like, "I'm gonna show you the power of Sony Epic, and you know, we fly you on a Learjet out to New York and meet Tommy Mottola." Oh, he was doing it. Oh, okay, and yeah. so I, you know, I'm I'm out there. I'm just like wide eyed. So, but he's like, "Face never push you on the jet." When we get when we get back okay. home, you're gonna move in and. and um, and so I was able to work with him on Madonna. I was working with him on uh, Michael Jackson. I mean, it was crazy. And then he's like, and then you're going to work with my brothers um, after seven. And I, he's like, there's like five or six songs I want to use of yours for them. I was like, five or six songs? I was like, are you kidding me? Wow. So, yeah, we we all became like brothers in Kevon. And, and yeah. Melvin, my God. Peace. Shout out to Kevon. Yeah, Mr. Um, Melvin, Kevon. Melvin, yeah. Kevon did me the greatest favor of all time. When I first moved to LA, mm. I was working with Face as well. Yeah, yeah. Early on. Mm -hmm. And through Damon Thomas and that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And met Kevon. And Kevon was one of my mother's favorite singers. Yeah. Yeah. He could sing. Kevon sang Happy Birthday for my mother over oh, the phone yeah, one year. Yeah, yeah. That's Kevon. I will right there. never, wow. ever, ever forget That's that. That range. Oh my what? God. What? I hate him. And he don't miss. He don't miss. Up there. Uh, don't miss. He clean. Oh, uh, you you stop it with the range now. Huh? No, you stop I'm it with the range. Oh man, range. you can go. You can, I can go up I can, there. I can cheat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can stretch. You know what I'm saying? You like you like trying to touch the rim. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you can come the, down the, real fast. The, the, the fingertips <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. I know how to cheat my range. So but all I'm, so all of this is in your first year. It's crazy. It was so crazy to experience so much Grammy nomination and right off someone to love and everything. You're a it baby. Was, I'm a baby, and I don't. I don't know that this isn't normal. The way normal. I know <laughs> it's not normal, but it's like I didn't know how to process it all because it was all happening so fast. So the main thing that I really knew that I wasn't gonna do was become Hollywood and fake and be, uh, you know, worried about fame and letting that control what I wanted my goals to be because I was still a musician, still into the craft of songwriting and producing. Mm -hmm. So even though they wanted me to be an artist, and okay, now we got we got this look, we want you to put this on, we want you to talk like, you know, we want you, not talk like this, but we want you to speak with these people, we want you to have this type of, they put me with an interview coach and all this and, you know. Yeah, there used you know, to be a right. whole thing. Yeah, yeah you have a whole thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, Etiquette and, yeah, 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 yeah. and that and whole and thing. You yeah. learn it all very fast and quickly, you know, and, um, it's just a lot to do at 18. You know, I was only 18. You were 18, 18 with someone to love him? Yeah. So did you even finish your year at school or did you? Yeah. Like, or were you? I was, so I. Or so did you get on the road? So, so actually I was probably 19 to come to think of it because you're right. I, I was, because um, this happened um, the summer of after I graduated okay. from uh, high school. This is when it happened. It was summer. It was crazy because my, my pops told me, he's like, you know, you know, um, what colleges you've been thinking about? And I was like, oh, no. I was like, oh, I'm getting a record deal. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not going to college. And he's like, oh, I hope so, because if if you're living here, you're going to college if you don't get a record deal. And I was like, oh, no, don't worry. So I came home after meeting Kenny and Tracy, and I was like, I got a record deal, Dad. I'm not going to college. Wow. <laughs> and that was a good Was thing. it an easier conversation because you came from a family of musicians? You mean because um, that's a tough conversation for some yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, honestly, that is sort of like the NBA for for mm -hmm. musicians. You know what I mean? You just got drafted in the NBA, basically. Right. You know what I mean? Um, signed to Sony Epic through Babyface, and you got a real thing. Was, yeah, it was a, it was a real deal, and I mean, it was an interesting thing because I did it on my own, which felt really, really good. It felt very and which rare. is really rare. Rare. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't no high power manager. I mean, you're talking about the homie who just was with me for moral support, walking in there with me, you know what I mean? We were working together, but it wasn't like a, you know, he was still cutting his teeth in the business. So I was like, you know, we're both trying to get on, you know what I mean? So yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful time. And so, I, you know. I, I, I gotta get to this, I wanna get to this nuance in 
the Someone to Love record. Mm. Such an important record because, you know, listening to this record as a babyface fanatic, <laughs> yeah. you know, as this song is happening, I'm like, man, it sounds like, sound like Babyface got some... Even I just took all the bass out of my voice. Got some new, <laughs> sound like Babyface got, got some, some new... Got some new, you know, swag on him. Like, what's, he, he, what's this new you know face? What, you know what he would do with me? He would say, whenever I try to thicken him up, because I have a bunch of different tonalities I do with my voice. And when I would try to go thicker with the, the singing, he'd say, no, 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 no. Just make it, like, make it real sweet. Like, just make it sweeter. You know what I mean? I'd be like, okay. You know, like, easy. And I'm just like, okay. So he left you to interpret what that meant. Mm-hmm. What that did for me was make it okay. I'm gonna do show him how I do him because yeah. it's like I I was impressing the girls in high school with this during lunchtime. Right. You yeah. and me both. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 so you know, here's my chance now to, to show that you know I, I've um, I've retained some of that sauce that you you know you showed me how to make. You know what I mean? And so yeah. like yeah, that's just show him a little bit of what uh, what he already you know is about. And I think that all of the great the great artists that work with Babyface, they all did that. They, uh, they had a piece. Tony, Tony Braxton yeah, yeah. was able oh, to do yeah, yeah. that. 100%. You know, Johnny Gill was able to do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and so to me, I picked up on the, the, the theme behind sort of his, his swag. Yeah. Was, was and Babyface has a certain bop. Sensitive. It's a bop. It's a certain bop to Babyface. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, what, I, what, I got, what I got from Dead him was a it. very similar thing that Prince had um, in terms of his... He... Um, he almost spoke his his words before he sang them. I, yeah, 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 of course. I'm good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? You know what I mean? It's like yeah. the beginning of yeah, his words. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'd be like, give, yeah. Him, give him the signs. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Give him the signs. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I took. And, it, and it, brings you, it brings you in. So what he mm-hmm. did with me was when we did Pretty Girl, he was like, your lips, you know what I mean? Like, let's make that first line the, the the line that makes people want to listen to the in. song and yeah it taught me so much man it was like little things that I I didn't know that would be so effective that ended up being like defining factors in how I produce and from the way I stack my vocals and things like that to you know harmony and melodies and yeah it's just it's weird like I feel like we're related in some sense because I'm I've, I've we both got you know sprinkled that 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 similar mm-hmm. thing yeah. You know? Yeah. It's called the hundred percenter. That's okay. <laughs> not, it's not many of you guys out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what? I you know, I'm gonna let y'all toast to the hundred percenters, man. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do it. We do it. All. You do it. All. Man, you, bro. You, <laughs> you, you, you. Wait till we get to you. Wait till we get to. Wait till we get to what you have done for me, man. Influence wise, my gosh. Um. So the first album. First album. First album. <laughs> what a smorgasbord of records. Came kicking in the door. <laughs> yeah. And what's Thanks. crazy is that, you know, black people are really protective of R&B music or of soul music. And of culture, that, of the culture. Absolutely. Of the culture, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. And it felt like to me, at least from my standpoint, you were welcomed with open arms. Yeah, man. Because from record one, I was like, he got it. Yeah. Oh, man, thank you. Yeah. And that's yeah. just not me. Like, that's that's the culture. Yeah. The it was, culture it was, it was an inter- interesting time, wasn't it? Because there wasn't a lot of of my template as an artist. Absolutely. You know what I mean, there wasn't a lot of that going on um, at the time. I mean, we had George Michaels, and we had pop popular versions of mm-hmm. soulful esque kind of guys. I think the the one person that makes me think so R and B who who wasn't black was Tina Marie, of course. You know, yeah. she was a, she's yeah. a staple in, in R and B music. And growing up hearing her really kind of sealed the deal for me in terms of like really realizing that music is music and if we love it, we love it. It yes. doesn't matter, you know, you can love it and be whoever you are. Yeah. Sure. And but it's about like how much you love it. You know, so I, I loved it a whole lot. And so, did you did you face any resistance early on? Yeah, you definitely. Did? I had some people tell me you should just produce, and which is in, it, it, 
in a sense, the reason why when I met Babyface, I wasn't gonna come in. Oh, I'm trying to be a you artist, already in you know that mindset. I mean? Yeah, I was already been told. I was already been programmed to to think. Oh no, well, you know, white guys don't really sing R and B, and they don't really they don't look right doing it. So it's like you know, I mean, I I had always been kind of you know been told, oh, you can sing for a white boy. You know what I mean? Which yeah. was to me was like. Mm. It's kind of like that's a backhanded it's compliment. Like, it's like that's being, a backhanded like being, compliment. It's like being short and playing ball, and like, oh, you could ball for somebody short. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, and you're like, okay, thanks. You know what I mean? So um, it was always sort of like this bashfulness that I had to lose that in order to be an artist. You know, uh, but I think I is <laughs> an interesting person to learn from from Babyface. And as far as an artist, I don't really feel like I learned. I think stylistically, what I learned from him as an artist is incredible. But I learned a different thing because he was so shy. Really, and really shy. And when you talk about the mis mis the mystery behind R&B mm -hmm. and how we we never really did interviews and we never was out there like like we are now, like making man, was he secretive? Was he behind yeah. the scenes? He never did. And so yeah. I thought that's the way to be, you know, to be sort of a person of less words and don't really, you know, because he was very, very, um, he was so smooth with his interviews, sm so smooth with his performances, but when it came to um, seeing him kind of out there and in the, in, in doing the, the Walk of Fame, I didn't really see him doing that. I saw him in the studio just grinding all the time. So to me, that was what it was about, was the craft. And the craft. Less of the, you know, the glitz and the glam. But it was, it, I, you know, there's no denying that the two go together. If you're going to be an artist, you got to be out there. You know what I mean? So I learned my own way as far as those those ropes, you know what I mean? I'm figuring out those 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 streets, you know, um, and how to maneuver on my own. I think it was it wasn't until the second album though that I really had got my feet up. You know, so the I mean? first album was it just it was heavy, just you and face? Yeah, just him and I. And okay. There was no other producers. I produced ninety percent of that album. Of the um, first album? Yeah, my first album. That in itself was like, crazy. There's two songs that he I didn't he produce wrote, 90% of my on, on the first album you didn't? No. I it, wrote I wrote all of my first album. Okay. But you know, for producers from Key Bates, they bring everybody to Butter, J Dub. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They Fire, brought the guys. They, they was giving you the guy. Like, yeah. They, yeah. Gave, they gave me the guys. And I was like, well, my feeble tracks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Butter well, used to produce for Dr. Dre. I'm like, Yeah, you know what? Yeah, isn't that a that. trip when you bring in your track and then it gets doctored up and, you know, sauced well, up a bit. Well, here's the crazy part, right? Is that, you know, the kind of the defining moment for me as a producer was bringing in a little track that could <laughs> and, you know, them not really hearing the song, me deciding to sell it to Dave Hollister, then them finally really listening to the song, calling me back saying, hey, if you sell it to Dave Hollister, we're going to kill you. <laughs> and then... To them saying, you know, you're not really a producer. You know, you're you're you're, you're a beat maker. You're, you're a track maker. You're not really a producer. So we're gonna send your song around to to all the major producers and let them reproduce it. We're gonna get the best track for this song. So hmm. all of the top producers that we had and a few that were even outside Tried took, a, hand. took a crack at reproducing my song. Yeah, and none of it worked. I, I I experienced something like and, that. And what I learned is that it's not always the best track. It's not always the best lyric. It's not always the best melody. And it may not even always be the best vocal. Mm. But the marriage of all of those things yeah. at that point in time are just magic. They're mm. just undeniable together. And that was maybe I deserved yeah, no. not my, not my most, you know, extensive body of work. Like I wasn't in there, like sequencing crazy and doing <laughs> it's, this. It's a very, that's a, very, uh, a minute. Mm, mm. Yeah. Do do. But wasn't that the time? It, you know what I mean? It's like it, it was. It, it, I think that the simplicity is is also a beautiful thing. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It, because with all of the. Uh, Especially with the message that mm -hmm. you were saying, because it was a sad message. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It was a. So it's like you're not gonna. <laughs> and then, 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 you know what I mean? But I'm it was so like, sad. It was sad. Yeah. It felt sad. It felt lonely. At that time, you know it, was, it was it was like, it was Timberland. 
It was yeah. oh yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, who else was a lot of sauce on those tracks? Man. A lot of yeah. a lot of like yeah. a lot of sauce on those tracks. So you were doing something that was very yeah. simple. Very simple. Yeah. yeah. Bare you know bones. It, yeah. yeah. Like, I was like. And who it, was? And who was? What? What? What artist? Male artist was coming on some like I I I did wrong. Like my bad. Like this is. I messed up. You know, I, mean, I deserve. Yeah. I deserve yeah. to 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 be yeah. this way. It was it was definitely you know, a look in the mirror. Yes, and I think it you know it's also very telling what has made R and B so beautiful over mm-hmm. the years. As you know, you've kept the foundation alive with songs like that. In terms of like what R and B has always offered that other styles of music of don't necessarily yeah. offer is a a chance to really kind of reconcile with the whole idea of love. You mm-hmm. know what I mean, and mm-hmm. what does it represent in your life? Like, not necessarily what it what it is in general, but what does it mean to you? Like, yeah. Yeah, are you in love, or do you want love, or do you are you lonely? You know, all these questions come up with when you hear those records. It, everybody says that the '90s makes makes them feel some type of way because it, that that this music now is, is not really pressing on those same heartstrings the same way. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I mean. So, it's, yeah. but it's a beautiful thing to belong to that era like yeah. that. You know, for me. We, we wasn't afraid to be in our feelings, as they say, you know what I mean? Absolutely. You know? We weren't being called simps you know? for uh, wanting to take care of a woman. That's right. Wanting to please a woman. We weren't, that that wasn't a derogatory, that wasn't but, the, but it's so crazy though, because even if you listen to where music is now, and you listen to the most successful music right now, which is hip hop, mm-hmm. it's a lot of simping in hip hop. Hip hop, it's, it, it, they're either killing, are they full out simping? <laughs> <laughs> they they didn't bought they didn't bought fifty seven thousand Birkin bags, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and then killed twenty people. And then killed twenty. <laughs> they be crying about, you know, is you still in love with me? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's the it's the wildest thing because it just, I guess it just got styled different. Mm-hmm. It got styled different because even if, you know everybody always goes back to like. What's the street R&B? You got to make a street R&B. And they go to Jodeci. Mm. And then you listen to those records and you're like, this is really street soft. Ball. These guys are really soft. So you have they're my- dressed we, really we, tough, we, we, we but they're so, really soft. Right, yeah. We were so unapologetically In love. Loving. Yeah. Loving, yes. Like, yeah. And, it's, you know, and the truth of the matter is, yeah. there's nothing soft about that. There's right. nothing it's soft. It's nothing like, soft about loving your woman. Man. Like, you know, I was a grown man at 18, man. I'm yeah. sorry, but I was. I was making grown man moves, writing grown man lyrics yeah. at 18. Yeah. I knew what I wanted. Yes, I was a, someone to love. I wanted someone to love. <laughs> I wanted someone to love. You want you the pretty girl. Yeah, I want the pretty girl. Yeah. Yes, you know what I'm yes. Saying? And it's like, it's, it's, it's very it's player interesting. Of you. It, was, it was very player. Damn, yeah, peace, bro. You know? That's, I can't take the credit for those Jones, but I'm yeah. just telling you, man, like paying attention to the guys that did it before me was those guys were older than me. Mm-hmm. You know, they had gone through some things that inspired them to write records like Can You Stand the Rain, you know, New mm. Edition, you know. Mm. To hear that record is a defining moment for me because I remember it was eighth grade and it was the summer of eighth grade and everyone's uh, leaving, we're all graduating, going to different schools. And this is, you know, after I finally get all my friends to watch me with the first time performing and everybody's believing in me, oh man, you're gonna kill it, you're gonna be famous, man, blah, blah, blah. You should be on Star Search, you know, all that. <laughs> um, and we had to say goodbye. So this record comes out. Can you stand the rain? I mean, yo, it was it was literally like Tears of Joy kind of a record. Like, yeah. wow, this is, we got to grow up now? Oh, damn. Like, I guess we wow, do. That song is still you bringing us yeah. that, that time and space. It's that time. And, and the fact like, that it's... You know, partially Sesame Street too, but whatever, whatever. whatever. I don't it's, know if you, I don't know if you guys ever noticed that, but I, you know, no. it does. Uh, Sunny days, see us. Sesame. The doors away. Wow. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm sorry, guys, if they see y'all. Wow. <laughs> oh, copyright infringement. Yeah. Wow, but we on Sesame Street right now. They know what they did. They, they got to stop it. So, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, but yeah. So well, you got robbed first, right, Sesame right. Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, I guess you know, you're connecting the kids. But you know what? We just gonna. You know, yeah. It's yeah. funny we have. It's funny we have new edition. I think all of us have new edition in common. But my first concert was New Edition, and when that Any Heartbreak tour came. I used to listen to that Any Heartbreak album every day. And I begged my father to take me to the Capitol Center in DC 
to see no please take me to see new edition and bobby brown and, and i'll be sure was on there yep. yeah what's yeah. yeah. that famous tour. guy wasn't was no. it very very was famous be sure, tour. bobby okay. brown and new, edition. and new edition okay that's right that's and um and bobby got on stage and bobby was like bobby was mean yeah bobby was mean yeah. bobby was aggressive he was i mean I mean, them, them, bag, them baggy pants, they got tight at the bottom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With yeah. the diaper in the, diaper the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him oh. and Heart and Soul. Oh, my God. And yeah. the, metal, the, the, the creepers with the metal on the front. Bro, right? bro. Yeah, yeah. He was going, like, he was performing, like, for us, he was performing like a dude that was from the DMV. He like, was from everybody's neighborhood. He was from everybody's neighborhood. Right. Like, that's what we, we got from that. We went crazy with Bobby, right? Mm. But then... The new edition music starts. Now, I don't know if you know if you went to that tour, but they had these stairs, mm -hmm. and the stairs had white smoke. There were white stairs that yes. had white smoke coming up. That, that stage was so beautiful. And they came walking up the back of the stairs and wore, and walking down those stairs, and it was like ah, that band and everything, everything, everything. <laughs> and they proceeded to change my life. Yeah, and that's a middle school moment for you too. Yeah. In middle school, or high school, yeah. How, how, old are you, how old are you, John? You want me to ask? Forty-seven. You? Okay, so I'm forty-six. So okay, yeah. I was a year, but I be, when did when did any heartbreak come out? That was eighty-eight. Damn, any heartbreak was eighty-eight. Yeah, yeah. It was 88, so that might have yeah. been a. Yeah, about 12, that, that, 13. I think that was a middle school yeah. school moment for me. Yeah, changed my life. Yeah, it did. I had on the worst outfit. <laughs> you know what <laughs> tripped trip me out too was BBD came out right after that, right? Mm -hmm. And that was like when hip hop. And R and B kind of fused. The first time they were the, they were the because guys. it wasn't yeah. it they wasn't the guys that ever that. really had. Or really, before. Bobby Brown was. Well, Bobby Brown. They too. took it. They took Rock it Kim and was fully ran with stuff it for him. You know that Rakim was writing them raps for him. Rakim was writing the Bobby Brown raps. Yes, no way. That's who wrote his raps. All the Bobby Brown raps were written by Rakim. Wow. Yeah. So you think R? You think you give credit to Bobby Brown as being the first R and B and hip hop? Yes. Collab. Yes. Yes. The first Drake? Yes. But did <laughs> Right, right. Bobby right. Brown is the first Drake. Is he? Right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you can give it to James Brown, obviously. It starts with James. James Brown is the guy that was rapping True. very, very early Absolutely. and yeah. can sing his ass off and yeah. do everything, dance, whatever. It's so, you know what? It's something about the Brown name in R&B. Brown, yeah, yeah. The well, Brown name in R&B is pretty. <laughs> they were all been the, the king of R&B at one point. This is crazy. Yeah, this is yeah, really crazy. It's but true. It's true. Bobby Brown, in my, just my, in my humble opinion, I think Bobby Brown is the first bridge. Wow. He's the first yeah. true bridge of hip hop and R and B. Yeah. Now, because obviously yeah. James Brown wasn't hip hop. Right. Yeah. They called it a, a form of rap thing, or yeah. funk or whatever yeah. he was on. But like Bobby Brown was a hip hop R and B artist. For sure. Yeah, he was. For sure. Everything mm -hmm. about him was the streets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. But then he was rapping, but then he was singing. Like he he is, in he the, is club, the father. He turn, is in the he probably arrested, the first one that was really hosting probably. Fighting. I wonder what Bobby was getting to host a club back then. Ooh. He was getting a bag. Ooh. Yeah. What is a bag back then? Right. What is a bag? A bag is a bag. I'm just Bobby, saying, like, in, he, in, in just I mean, relative. A Bobby sold, what, nine million records uh, or something? He was like, huge. Yeah. He was dating. Wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he had like every, He had them all. But was, the was, the even a thing? <laughs> was the walkthrough even a thing, though, back then? I don't know. We gotta ask some of the OG club. Yeah, we gotta. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. book Bobby Brown? Okay. You gotta get Bobby Brown. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he was. What, what, what year did your first album come out? Ninety five. Ninety five. Were you hosting so what, clubs too? So was the walkthrough a thing? Were you, you know, not paid to? I so, wasn't so, legal enough to to actually be in clubs. I didn't say one yet. So my first album, my first album, I was touring the world and legally couldn't be handed a drink in the club. Like I couldn't, you know, be in the club. I could be there. You could be like drinking. Work, they, like yeah. work be drinking you know, yeah. I had to have a, a person from the Sony, you know, like a, a yeah, chaperone. But, or yeah, yeah, but this is the music <laughs> business, man. We know you. Well, nobody we pay attention to none of that shit, man. You was, you had a drink in the club. Oh, man. for sure. <laughs> for sure. You know I did. You know I did. <laughs> but were you? But like, were you doing after parties? Not a lot of that back then. No. You know, yeah, that, you know, we had, that wasn't we had a thing. The, we had the Century Club here in L.A. You know yeah, the Century we was Club. Doing that. Yeah, yeah, we was yeah, doing, yeah. Um, But nobody, I mean, you weren't getting called no, to just I mean, host. Hey, no, they would, be, they would be like, you know, hey, come sing a couple songs tonight at the Century Club. They'll pay you some money, you know what I mean? All right, cool. Come so down. it was only about 
singing with like by performing yeah, you know, some kind perform. of performance some kind yeah of performance. you know you yeah. go around and do like a little little couple songs or something like kind of like what what we do now but not as not as a real like club appearance like that back then it was more like you know at the end of the night you go get up on stage and do you know get up and wherever the you DJ, gonna sing get at in some the DJ, point you yeah. know, booth and sing on top of your record you know yeah. what I mean? yeah with the crowd and they you know they show love so that was that was awesome i met i remember being back in 95 in you know in the century club being with Shaq and kobe and all those guys man and you were first you with yeah you know what i mean it was just me watching me. watching Shaq, tupac, kobe watching tupac you know come in there while and out knowing that you know knowing who he was and all right that, seeing him out and all that because that you know that's a that's a great segue that's a great that's segue. A great sweat man you know i can't fully get the words <laughs> out because from yeah. my knowledge talk about or to my knowledge mm -hmm. You are the only R and B artist with a Tupac feature. Yeah, I, I don't with know. Him in the like he may yeah. have actually done some other stuff that, hasn't come out, yeah, that yeah, may have never yeah. come out. Maybe something that was Boy, on Death Row. Danny Boy, That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Something that was on Death Row. Shout out to Danny Boy, amazing yeah. artist, amazing Absolutely. singer. Yeah, yeah. You had a Tupac feature, bro. Real feature. It's so it's like, you got you got it. It's my badge of honor. It really is, man. It, it's What's Tupac feature. It's 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 something that is so so you know, amazing in my heart, but it's at the same time, it was it was a very sad thing to experience, to mm -hmm. know him as a person, you know, and to, to shake his hand and to be in the studio and to have the camaraderie that we did and smoke together and drink together and, and, and talk about our relationships and our life, you know, and put that in the record. Because how old are you at this point? And I'm, you know, probably 21 at that point. Wow. 22, maybe. So, yeah, he was really putting the... Um, once again, someone was sprinkling that that magic on me, and I was just like, "Wow, I can't believe this! This is amazing!" You know, because uh, I was already a fan, and I met him at his "How Do You Want It" video shoot. He invited me down to the "How Do You Want It." Wait, 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 wait! How about you said the "How You Want It" video? Yeah, "How Do You Want It." <laughs> how, how does it feel? It? <laughs> how does it feel? <laughs> how does it feel? Aaron Hall, <laughs> Jodeci. <laughs> yeah, it's what? It's, it's Johnny J, Casey, and JoJo. I remember it was uh, Sway and Tech from, you know. From yeah, Sway. they're from the Bay, you know, from the Bay. Yeah, yeah, come yeah, on, come yeah, on, Sway, yeah. Sway and Tech was on the bus, and then Tupac's on there, and he wild, and he had the Hunters there. It's, it's Python of course, Snakes, of course, it's crazy. Heather Hunter it's is it's there. all kinds of wild. <laughs> who, <laughs> y'all, who? who? You, Heather Hunter. Don't do this. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you boy, said Heather Hunter. Boy, I thought you said don't, the you, don't you oh, don't do this. Oh, don't think I don't know. Don't you, <laughs> don't you, <laughs> don't you act like. Don't, don't you ever think that I don't know. Huh? Shout out to Heather Hunter. Yeah. Uh, made, made I me. met her when I was 18 <laughs> at, a, at a Bed Bath & Beyond. Hey man, listen, I, you know, listen, it, was, it, was, I, it was very interesting. I, I met her at a club love. here in LA and you know, you, you can talk for a little bit. Good yeah. to you. Shout out to I Heather never got in that car service she yeah. tried to send me, but you know yeah, what? Yeah, no, it was... <laughs> well, it's a cra it was a crazy ah. day, man. It was a crazy day. I wow. met him, I met him, we played him some beats, he freestyled right there in front of me and he, I knew we was going to do something. I was like, mm -hmm. man, we just if I could get in the studio with him, man. So two weeks later, he hit me up, and it was at Can Am Studios. He always worked at this one studio. Mm -hmm. it's right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, we actually so. had a room there years yeah. after. Yeah. Only studio. We did the Omarion yeah. album oh, okay. there. Yeah, yeah. Only studio I ever seen who they had metal detectors before you got in and a security yeah. guard at the thing. Yeah, so yeah, leave the yeah. leave the guns at the front in the safe. Like, I was just like. Yeah. Okay, like, yeah. all right. It's still you bulletproof I mean? glass in there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, only place I've ever seen. Did that. you did you produce that one? No, that was Johnny J. God rest his soul, man. He's amazing he's a, he's producer. Yeah, producer who doesn't really get his props like he should. You know what I mean? Right. So that's why I make sure to always mention Johnny J, man. You know, he's and also Ronnie King is part of that too. There's a lot of okay. great players on that that song. Johnny Taylor. Because um, yeah, um, it has some. Ah, that line. It's a vibe. Oh, it, yeah. it, to me, it reminded me of yeah. a Marvin Gaye record when I heard the track. It reminded me of like the Midnight Love era when he was doing sexual, yeah. uh, sexual healing, uh -huh, and, it, uh -huh. and it was like it had that. Pss, 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 pss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know that that the rim coming back yeah. at you like. Pss, yeah. Like it reminded yeah. me of Sade or something. Yeah, I was just yeah, like, yeah, ooh, that's yeah. got a little no, cha cha. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was it just it was so smooth to me. It was interesting because I was so you know, um, amped to work with him. I wanted him to, to, you know, I wanted to blast off on one of my songs, on one of my tracks. Okay. So I played him some songs and, you know, it was like, all right, cool. And then let me see what you have, you know? 
And then he played me that track. And it was oh, like, he right, played you that record. Let's, damn what I was talking about. I mean, I had all the gear ready to produce and everything. I had MPC in there and all the you know, racks yeah. and all that. Yeah, ready. yeah. Psh, damn, all this equipment. The track is ready. Let's go. So we put that down on the reel from the, the DAT, just the two track. And um, I start just vibing with him behind the, the board and all that. And I'm just like, <laughs> like I started Im yeah. Im immediately going with that melody. Mm -hmm. He was the one to fill in the words. Yeah. And oh, girl, wow. it's all right, baby. Cause you, cause it's there in your eyes. Like he was like, he went full hey, RB. He went full on it. And then when I forgot how the, how the melody went, cause I was kind of going, doing other things. How'd I go, how'd, I, how'd the hell go again? And I was like, uh, I don't know, man. How'd it go again? He's like, girl, it's all right. I was like, okay, nah, go in the booth, lay the hook. Forget how the hook goes. Like, this is how it goes, man. Nah, that ain't right. Girl, it's all right. I'm like, so he produced right, the vocals too. He yeah, produced the vocals. Oh, yeah, vocals. <laughs> For sure, produced the vocals. Yeah. And then yeah. when I started doing too much, nah, man, hey, 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 hey. I, I need you to feel this, John, man. Like, go back to the top, and I just want you to feel it. And then somebody will walk in the room and disturb the energy or something like that. He would be like, yo, man. Sit down, man. You know who that's in that 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 is in there, and that's John B in there. And like, I just was like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> like, he showed me like so much love, y'all. Yeah. Like it was, man. I love yeah. I love my brother. You know what? Yeah. One time. So, yeah. One time. One time for Tupac. One time. One time for Tupac. Tupac. Yes, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Big talk. Ooh, producing Big talk. vocals. Ooh. Remembering the hook, singing the hook. I can believe it though. He was because he was that kind of passion. Mm -hmm. It was passionate. He was he he's he like, you want to hear after we got our song done, he was like, You want to hear something else I'm working on? I was like, cool, let's let me check it out. He takes me right over. He's got the other room book right next door. And he's in there, um, and he already laid one verse of uh California to live and die in LA. Oof. And then he's gonna just take his lyrics and he goes in there and he busts the second verse on on me, and I'm like Right in front of me, he just does it. And I was like, did that just happen? You just did that right now? And he's like, yeah, man. And I was like, then he goes, he does another track and does it exactly the same to where it was like, you know how when you double your vocals and you, mm -hmm. just, you just stick it, it's yeah. just exactly, just snapped, it sounds yeah. like one vocal. Yeah. That's how his he doubles his vocals, bro. The pitch, everything, everything. was perfect. Yeah. So yeah, he there's nobody like Tupac. I still believe if he was alive today, the industry would be different. Like it would, there would be a no. The shifted more. way. There yeah, was a lot yeah. of soul that he brought. Yeah. A, a lot of um, spirituality that he brought. It didn't have to have a religion connected to it for it to be spiritual. It was. It was about a human thing. And he's gonna test you to the core of who you are as a human by the things he says and the things that he stands for. So if you don't like it, that's okay. But this is where he stands, and this is where he's at. So meet him over where he's at. And you're gonna be transformed, because ever since I met Tupac, I was transformed. I was, I think he put he put some stripes on on the side of me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He, he, he fully decorated like soldier, ready to go into the world and, and represent the culture and do everything I'm, I've been doing now for 27 years. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm just I'm so blessed, man, to have had that experience. For real, I don't ever take it for granted. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah. well, we got the we got the dabble. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. yeah, man. Yeah, we did. We got, man. The, we got the devil on Oh, man. Things. Let me tell you this guy, yeah. how, how influential you are. Let me give you your flowers, my brother. Thank you, my Because uh, I'm telling you, when I first met you, I just thought, what an incredibly humble guy who's a one stop shop, you know? And I, I relate to that. You know what I mean? I relate to someone who has a personal feeling that they can express themselves, mm -hmm. whether it be a beat maker or a lyricist, or but you do it all. You know, so it was really, it was really humbling for me to have you like what I was bringing to the table, yes, dig the track and dig mm -hmm. the, the everything. You were like, yo, let me get on that. And I was like, bro, like, this is crazy. So we did the song Stronger, Stronger Every Day mm -hmm. back in 2004. Yep. Ended up being the title track of my album. Um, basically, that, 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 that was like represented the strength that I was trying to show at that time mm -hmm. as an artist to be resilient through whatever the industry was going to tell me what is it? whatever don't kill you make you stronger right, right? You know? yeah. so to have you 
assist me on that like that with Lately, the first single from the album. Lately, everybody heard that, yo. And it was so hip hop and it was so. Who did that track? Was that? That was done by Brains. That was Brains. Yeah, that was yeah, Brains. Because oh, I used to brains. see you in the building all the time, yeah. in the Evans building. I used to see you all the time up there with the, with Damon and them. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, Tank, you know, all right, I'm going to see you. And then uh, Jerome, you, you, you actually sold your truck to my manager at the time. Um, you actually, you let him take over the lease or something like that. You remember that? Was it hot when you said it? It was crazy. It, was, it, it was, wasn't hot. <laughs> no, it was, no. It was a, a dope-ass <laughs> burgundy uh, no, I wasn't talking about that. Yeah, I, was, I was talking about that. Yeah, yeah, it was hot, though. No, it was, it was a street like, truck, for sure. <laughs> it was, hey. But it was dope. Yeah, it was, it was, it was like you had to call somebody <laughs> yeah, and they come pick up the I said, where you get this ride from, There was some tricky times, baby. He pulled up on me. He had the burgundy jar. I was like, where you get this? I got that custom painted. Yeah, that's that was nobody had that. It was a street truck, though. It was. So I said, where did you get this drum? And Fats was like, yeah, my... uh. My cousin, he gonna bring the car to you, and then you just give him the payments. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's what's up. I don't ask no questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, nah, that's what's up. Yeah, I do. I do. That's all. This, this guy's cool. You know what I mean? So, cause you know that was my family and everything. He was helping him out. Yeah, so, yeah. That was dope, and and I hadn't even met you yet. And then when we did we did uh lately, and I heard you know the vocal. You stack the vocals, and you, I mean, you're it's that's his voice voice on the whole mm -hmm. hook of lately. I didn't even want to stack over him because I didn't want to I didn't want I wanted people to know like this is Tank yeah, singing yeah. my background like he's featuring on here with me basically yeah. you know and it was it just worked so well and then when Babyface heard it he's like I gotta get on there I gotta help write the bridge let me get the bridge and so he put his backgrounds on the bridge so I got Babyface yeah, and yeah, Tank yeah, on that joint come incredible. on man if you're an R&B lover and you yeah. came up in this you gotta understand what that means like that is that's a that's a heavyweight moment for me. Um, yeah, so you're on two songs on that. Where album. did you? Where was it? Was was it an album release you had in the Hollywood? For that, that I came to. That was that yeah. what that was? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. was performing. Yeah, he was doing yeah. The whole that's thing. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. That's right. Yep. Yeah. That was a good time. Yeah, man. I mean, I, you were just you know, it was it was, it was easy. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you tap in with like minded people. Yeah. It's just it's just easy. You I mean, mm. was like. He was like my cousin, you know what I'm saying? Man, like, yeah, like we had, man. like we had been doing it yeah. spiritually. We had probably already been connected, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? In in, in an alternate universe, just already man. prepping us for the moment, you know, in this space. Like it's the same way me, when, with with me and Jay. Like it was just easy. Like, but the voice. The first song we wrote together was a hit. Your your voice is is no one like you, man. And I've heard people try to sound like you. You know what I'm saying? And right away, I'm going, damn, he's trying to sound like Tank, you know? <laughs> and that's something when you have your own thing that you've put your stamp on, you know, singing. Yes, sir. Uh, Babyface has got his own thing. So when I yes, tried to sound like him, you knew I was trying yeah. to sound like Babyface, right? Yeah. I had to form my own style and, and, and really... Well, you didn't know you have a thing, too. Yeah, I, I, I You know, by the time it. you got to that second album. I by the time you got it. to that second album. The and second that's why album, I asked about the first one. Yeah, yeah, the second album, I really found my legs. But it's interesting because this is how it ties into Tank, is that moving on past the second album, the third album, I'm still singing in that kind of thinner texture quality. I haven't really filled my voice out or played with the whole idea of taking it deeper into my... Um, okay. Thickening out the tone a little bit instead of it being so thin and breathy. I'm going to sing... And then put vibrato behind it. This is a whole nother voice. And I found that voice in my live show by singing out. But when I heard him sing, I said, this guy, he's, cause when I heard Johnny Gill for the first time, it was a thick tone, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And he's yes. one of my favorite yes. all time yeah. singers he's of happy. all time. Mm -hmm. But when I heard your voice, I was like, here's a, a thicker tone, but I, this guy can really sing. This guy can really like, I mean, he can sing Mary had a little lamb and it'll be like, he just, you know, his tonality is just, so I know that you are the catalyst for artists like, you are the number one influence for Sam Smith. I mean, number one influence for, I mean, for me, I you're, you're up there in my top five all time favorite singers, bro. Like, honestly, um, when, I, when I heard you 
I, I started to try to play with that a little bit, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of like, let me, because when we did, um, when we did Lately, um, I, I, I don't think I approached that with the same tonality that I did with the other records. I was like, pretty young thing, sexy young girl, I've been, you know, yeah, da, yeah. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah. there's a little bit more girth mm -hmm, in there. Mm -hmm. And then started playing playing with it even more and then you know you hear that album and you're like okay john john's growing up a little bit yeah, you know yeah, and, yeah. And, um, yeah but i think that that's really cool when you when you can find yourself and others or something that you relate to in others and then that ends up being a strong point for you that's that's always been the gift of music really is yeah. like you know knowing that we have other things to do other things to learn there's more to it than just where we're at right now I'm like Somebody, you know, I'm I'm still learning today. Like the, the young kids are teaching me too. With the, the, oh, for the, sure. You know, the tracks and how we can innovate still. And for sure. Yeah, the the rhythm has changed. The syncopation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot of the, um, you know, the cultures that have always sort of done this kind of these kind of rhythms are now, like the African and the Latin and all that. It's, it's all merging. And now it's Emerging. like yeah. it's all pop. Yeah. Now. It's all like popular. Because that's what I was gonna ask you too. Like you mentioned, you said 27 years in it. Mm. There's no way that you get that type of time in it without growth. Mm. So mm. can you give us like just just the things that you've learned along the way, mm -hmm. or the things that you you know things that you practice mm -hmm. that can help a new kid getting into this industry see himself 30 years later, mm -hmm. 25 years later? Because this game throws you out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, if you if you allow it to, yeah. if you allow it to, I think with so many tools now that we didn't have back in the day, you could really put out stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But be, just because you could put it out doesn't mean that it necessarily is going to be of quality. Now, what what makes quality, right? To me, quality is all about what went into it, like the ingredients. You know what I'm saying? Like to me, you could make a ditty that just comes out. Um, it's like a catchy tune or whatever. And it just serves its purpose. It's mass. It's massive, but it doesn't really have like a meaning other than it just being like whatever it is. There's records that stick around because the meaning and the ingredients that went into it. Like you know how I have my heart broken in my life. You know all that goes into making songs, right? Songwriting. Yeah. It's the reason why you believe me when I mm -hmm. when I sing to you. Yeah. You know, is because yeah, no, I've been through some things. Like some things didn't go right for me in my life, with relationships and things like that. So that's why when you get it right in a song and that feeling is there and it's like it's recorded in time and that's me, that represents the love I'm trying to have in my life and the, the relationship I'm trying to have. In my life. When you get it right like that, it's, it's, it's kind of like that's all that matters is leaving that behind, is that, that feeling. So what I want to tell people is like, you know, believe in the feeling because that's where it all started was yeah. the feeling, you know? So yeah. you're not wrong because you want to just say, turn up and get a little ditty done, whatever, it's a song, a little catchy tune, whatever. That's fine, great. But just ask yourself, what what stands the test of time? Like, have you ever challenged, what I want to ask a kid coming up is, have you challenged yourself yet to, do, to be uncomfortable mm -hmm. and put yourself in a situation that's so revealing and telling so truthful that you have nowhere to hide it's just like this is who i am i actually have a heart like you know yeah because i think it's so many of us that are kind of like in ro like we're robots to this industry we're like i know what works so i'm gonna do what works and this is the cheat code you hear what's on the radio you know and you just I mean? write the, a version yeah. of it yeah. yeah and then there's a plug-in for everything to make you sound good so it's like you know i i got it you know we you got a lot more tools yeah, yeah you mentioned that yeah. you know what i'm saying we got a lot yeah, more yeah. tools it, it's, it's tricky these days we, tricky we got a lot more tools to make it right but don't let that be the reason that your growth is stunted you know what i'm saying like dig in more like it's it's a reason to even let go more now and be like Okay, yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, just, just, I, I, I really want to continue to let people know how I feel for real. And I don't want to have to be daunted or, or intimidated by an industry that's changing all the time because it's going to change in, in a year or two, three yeah. years. It's going to be totally different. They're going to be on some other thing. And we're going to have to catch up to that too, right, or, right. or not, and just do how we, whatever we want to do. Because I also feel like when you're good at something, that's okay to just be good at something and just do that too. Yeah. You know? Like there's not enough people, I, I think, believing in that. It's, I think we think we have to change with the times. It's like, no, you, 
it's cool to change with the time. So it's also cool to have things that are vintage and that have that right. feel. Yeah, yeah, right, and that yeah. you can survive being you. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 really refreshing hearing a Sil Silk Sonic, you know, and hearing that, Love that, that, that vintage sound come back because I've always been, you know, a, a fan of Motown and the, the classic soul stuff too. So to, to hear it be okay to kind of go down that Amy Winehouse yeah. road that Mark Ronson, you know, kind of brought back and stuff and the vintage recording and the old school spring reverbs and you know, yeah. the lo-fi EQ and all that. That's, that's, a, that's a fun way to write. And uh, I love that we can do that now because of the people that, that take the chance to just be in their feelings and just do what they feel, you know? Right. It's, just... it, it's, a, it's a very authentic place, right? And yeah. <clears throat> although we, although we sh share some of the same, um, we all share heartbreak, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, could be the title of, of, of the song, Heartbreak. But your verse is going to be different from my verse. My verse is going to be different from his right. verse. Right. But it's mm -hmm. still under the umbrella mm. of heartbreak. Mm. But what that what that lets you know is that, you know, there's power in, the, your verse is going to be powerful because it's you. It's your identity. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I can't sing your verse or sing the words to your verse like you because I... I didn't live your heartbreak. I lived my heartbreak. Yeah, yeah. Right, and so the 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 thing that they can't get from anybody else is your story, mm -hmm. your fingerprint, your yeah. identity, and the more you're true to that, you know what I'm saying. And this is just to complement what you were saying. The more you're true to that, the longer you're going to be in it because the thing that you do, they're only going to be able to get from you if you're true to you. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's like, you know, when you say I have a thing, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm like I'm like, John, you have a thing too though. Because <laughs> you can always say, Oh, he's trying to be like John. B. Oh no, 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 oh, no. Let you me know tell what I'm you. Yeah. Yeah. Let yeah. me John tell B. you. Man. Ass, nigga. He ain't no he ain't no <laughs> hey, real John B. I know John. <laughs> <laughs> I know John you know, B. You know what? I will tell you, you were like a, a, a trainer is it, to a guy who's trying to get buffered, you know what I'm saying? Like honestly vocally. Like, yeah. I mean it's a great way to put it, because the guy, you know what I mean? I yeah, don't like know. to claim. Look, I mean, it's the reason it's why guy. it's called Tank, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, it's I mean, pretty more, perfect more name for you, man. One, bro. Yeah. I'm saying, like, yeah. you know, the vocals represent that. I think that's a perfect, you know, name for you, bro, because, I mean, your your voice is not nothing to play with. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, you can sing anything, man. And it, It's nice to hear a grown man to be able to really, in this day and age, be able to really just bring emotion. Some of the melodic choices that you do, though, are just so original, it's so authentic, and it just, it really presses forward what we can do with melody. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of innovation in the church, in gospel oh, music. for sure, for sure. Um, Absolutely. You'll hear a lot of people just on the, the, the very front lines of, of the most innovative uh, melodies and, and runs and all kinds of ways of vocalizing right to me you, you you're in that same era of like okay i want to i want to see what what he's doing because he never repeats himself and he always shows what else is in his wheelhouse of of you know of of uh, it, there's other guys like Stokely as well you know what i mean you just look you look forward to hearing what they're going to bring out because my it's secret like, ingredient yeah, it's a secret ingredient. I'm going to do this one I, did, I didn't do on the last album. This is, here you go. Or, or here's one that you know, and blah, blah, blah. You know, here's, you know, and so I'm, I'm paying, paying attention to all these, these nuances, and I'm just like, wow, this is, this is wonderful. It's just wonderful to have an influence like that. And that's why I continue to appreciate Babyface. It's why, uh, you know, you guys always get mentioned in everything I do. It's like, you know, it's... That's cool. Yeah, that's really it's, cool. It's, it's really... So thank you, thank man. you, brother. You know? <laughs> but if 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 you had to have a a, a proudest moment in R and B, if you had to just pick one, like let's, I'm sure you have many, but if you just had to oh, pick man. one, just for I, just I, for the sake of this show, what, what, I will what, say, uh, you know, the moment that I was performing very recently, I think it was 2018, um, at the uh, Soul Train Awards when they allowed me to play Someone to Love and They Don't Know back to back. And uh, then I brought out Donnell Jones and he did his thing, killed it. And, um, but that performance particularly was, I just saw something in myself that I had never really seen. A maturity, a, 
a seasoned kind of veteran that had really kind of been waiting for that moment and that here's the moment and there's so many artists I know that have so many of those moments they can look back look at this award show look at this award yeah, show look yeah. at this. I don't have that you know what I'm saying my award shows have been very you know minimal so it's like when I got my my shot like that the other one was in 2013 I did it with Bobby Caldwell and yeah. that was an honor you know to be on the stage with him someone who shares the same walk, but very earlier, you know, yeah. a lot, yeah. a lot earlier, and I think that was even, it was very telling. Like getting back to what I said about white artists doing R and B music, it wasn't really accepted yet. So, do you way. feel like? Hmm. Do you do you feel like? To a certain degree, your music was too R and B, to be fully. Like, you know, maybe moved crossed into a over. pop space, crossed, crossed over. over. They tried to, like, which is the reason why I was no longer on Epic Records, because they tried to put me with David Foster and Diane Warren and do the song that was a bilingual song. Maybe we could get an international kind of more of an yeah. appeal type of thing. It's a song called Tour More, you know what I mean? It was a beautiful record, but it's not my, my it wasn't one of my choices for the album. I was I was over here doing records with Nas and you know producing records with with uh, with, with with you know ODB and Just Blaze and stuff. So I, yeah. I I was in a totally different energy, you know, than 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 that. So and they so, tried to cross you so over. So when they when they tried, I said, okay, cool, I'll go to the studio with David Foster mm -hmm. and Diane Warren. But you know, it's the kind of hang where it's like, oh, we, gosh, you're so black, you know. It's just like. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! It's like that kind they of. They hit you with the gosh. Yeah. God, yeah, I thought you were like a black guy at first. I was like, <laughs> I was like you work with Earth, Wind, and Fire, oh, and man. you work with Whitney Houston. Oh, I, should have cried. I did not expect you to be on that. <laughs> right. Like right. honestly, that was a disappointment when I when I when I met Dan, Diane Warren and she said that to me. I was like. That's not that's not soulful, like for to say that to someone. It's just not. Mm -hmm. So next time, Diane Warren, I see you. You're probably gonna you're gonna be like, yo, I don't like that you told people about that. She'll tweet that, about it. That was that was what, <laughs> that was what you said. Diane's a Twitter. <laughs> Shout out to Diane. I'm on the wall. It's like a quote of mine. She's a soulful. Yeah, she's, a, she's a soulful. But you know you said that though. You know you know you said yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of I was just kind of like, oh, okay. But you just want to stay, stay true. You want it to stay yeah. true to what to you To just love. the music yeah. you love. That's it. And I don't want people to like really bring that up anymore. Like the fact that I'm white. Like I, I, that's something that actually is a very annoying thing when somebody makes that seem like that has anything to do with anything. It's like, let that go because now it's been 27 years of doing this. Like, let's just make music. I have nothing to prove Yeah. anymore. I already proved it. So yeah. there's nothing to do anymore except to show people I still got it. And I still yeah. make music. Yeah. My music now, if you give it a chance, is just as good as it was back then. If anything, I think I'm doing it better just because I've learned so much and there's so much more to me as a as a as a as a man. Yeah. Uh, knowing what I want to say and how I want to say it. Now I can kind of like really lean into the curves and really, yeah. you know, I'm 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 you know controlling the narrative. You know, and I always have been, but I think that. For a lot, a lot of times, there was a lot of pressure to stay within this perimeter of what we felt was, what they felt was, um, you know, appropriate for someone of my my racial background. And right. Too. And I was so, just do like, you, did ultimately, I, did you lose your deal off of that? I went, I went against the grain working with Tupac. I went against the grain working with Guru. I, and I worked with the people that I had admiration for. I was like, I knew who to go to, whether it was a successful move. They're like, that's not commercial rap. That's like, why don't you get with LL or something? Like, that'd be cool too. If LL's down, I'd do it. But right now, Guru's down. And I'm a big Gangstar fan. So, you know, I know it doesn't mean anything for you, for me to work with Just Blaze, but Just Blaze is the hottest producer right now, making all the, you know, the Rockefeller stuff and, and, and everything else. So, why not work with Just Blaze? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The Joe Budden record, with the Jump Off record, I was like all, all, you know, just all over that. So, I wanted to be in the studio with those guys. And so if I had a budget, I was going to spend the money the way I wanted yeah, to spend wanted it. To. And yeah. I wasn't working with the people that they, they didn't see the vision of me working with Tribe Called Quest, you know, on Cool Relax. I had to show them, this is, this is how we're going to move. Ali Shaheed Muhammad, Bob Powers, like these guys, they, this is real hip hop. They, 
if people see that this is authentic, they're not going to question it. It's not going to be about my race. It's not going to be about all that. It's going to be about the music. So let's make good music, man. You know. Yeah. But I kind of had to show them because when I first turned in the, you know, the Are You Still Down with Tupac and all that, like, how are we gonna? How does they this fought that? To, oh my God, they fought. They don't know, huh? See, they they get mad at me Shit. now and they try to like tweet and be like on some like John, that's not true. We love. They don't know. No, nah, we love. Are you still down there? You they loved, loved it what it became. You, you loved it with no shade thrown. Honestly, this is just the way it happened. When we turned that record in, it wasn't nobody calling me talking about this is a hit. When he died, hmm. two weeks later, hmm. God rest his soul. So he passed two weeks later man, after the I record lost comes my out? Two weeks later, bro. The last thing my man said to me when I was leaving was, He's like, all right, brother, don't waste your time. Don't don't waste your talent now. If you're not doing three songs a day, you ain't really doing it. So, because I watched him literally right. get down like that. And it was just like, okay, man. <laughs> all right, bro. Love you, man. And it was like three in the morning. I'm driving from Tarzan back to Pasadena after drinking and smoking by myself. I'm sitting there crying with the window down, like, because I'm so happy, you right. know? And so, like, to, to get that news when I was in the studio two weeks later, that he had got shot again. I was like, well, he's going to make it because mm -hmm. he's Tupac. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so he wasn't, he, had, he was still on life support. And uh, yeah, we just, we just, we had just such a, a, all the air of wind just taken all out of everything that I was doing, sucked out of me. You know what I mean? So it was like, now what? So now the label's like, oh, let's put the Tupac song out. And I'm like, nah. No. Oh, man. And so, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, no, we believe in this project. We think this is going to be a record. So it was almost like a cool yeah, year of having that. Like, and so it had to get leaked. It was a it was a DJ who out of Atlanta, I remember, who played it without asking. Nope. He's like, no, they got to hear it. And as soon as it got leaked, it was just like, it was all It over. took off well for it. And they had to put it out. But Suge wasn't giving up the rights to Tupac, so I had to go to Feeney. And uh, Feeney stuck up for me. She's like, no, my son played me Are You Still Down. He loved that song. And, you know, it was it was one of his favorite songs that he did um, because he didn't play me a lot of his music. And he played me that song. He was proud of that. So she named his first album that she put out after his death, Are You Still Down. It was like a compilation of a lot of records because wow. that was the last song that he did. So, yeah, man, that was, it, to have that kind of like hit me like that, it was, a lot to in, inherit with mm -hmm. that, you know, in terms of the burden that that would represent. Yeah. He wasn't there to vouch for me anymore. I was like, well, putting out a song with, right. did you really record with him right. in the studio? Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. You know, where's Tupac, John? You know, it's like, shh. You know what I mean? So it's, like, it's been a lot, but it's a, nothing but an honor. Yeah. yeah. Great well, moments. We've got some R&B questions for you, John. Yeah, uh, you being in. I think um, I need a refill. Be, hey, listen, listen. <laughs> you like it? You like it? I like it. He likes it. He likes it. <laughs> I've never had that before. That's like vanilla. Ice, so I've always wanted to know this before, you know, before we can get to that. What's the B? Oh, man. <laughs> you going to make me go country do western on you? Y'all ne never... Now, the reason why I Nobody be, knows what the B stands my, for? My last name is Buck. Like the dollar bill, okay? Yeah, yeah. okay. Time, big like, bucks. Let's nah. cheer, let's cheer to the big uh, bucks, man. Yeah. To John uh, Big Buck. Buck. I could have been John, <laughs> Johnny Hold Buck. Hold on. Hey, yeah, you need maybe. some. You need some. You would have definitely been a country singer if your yeah, name Johnny, was Johnny, John, Buck. Johnny Buck. Johnny Buck. John Buck. Oh, My real name is Johnny. Your real name is Johnny? Yeah, That's right. the J is for Johnny, That's right? Yeah. Are you Jonathan or are you John? I'm Johnny. Johnny? Yeah, I'm Johnny. Oh, Johnny. You Jonathan? I'm Jonathan. Yeah. That's why it's J O N. Ah. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, now I'm back. Oh man, <laughs> so good to see you, brother. Man, so good. To see you. Get, get yeah, to, see to you, the big bucks. To the big bucks. To the big bucks. <laughs> to the big bucks. Man. Hmm. I'm so so. Come so on, Chief. Man. What you got for him, baby? What's your questions for? Come me. on, R&B questions. questions for, yeah. for this for this R and B. I'm, I'm in the zone. R and B now, guy yeah. right here. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a guy. A um, guy. He's a man. guy. Um, top five. Favorite R and B artists all Yours. time, all, all time. See, well, I mean, here you go. Okay. Um, okay. Well, let's say Marvin Gaye. Mm -hmm. I love that. Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. 
you know, Michael Jackson. Who's yes, yes, you yes. Know what I'm um, and I gotta, I gotta mention uh, Stokely. Oof. Yeah. I gotta yeah. say Tank. You know what I'm saying? I gotta say. You uh, made John B. That's, 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 that's You made John B's top five, bro. Yeah. Yes. You've been cooking. Yeah, yeah bro, I'm here. for sure. I'm here. Yeah. For sure. Wow. I mean, I mean, and the reason why I say top five is because of this is sort of the order that I discovered. Well, you know what? I will say even before Stokely though is Johnny Gill. I mean, it's it's a hard toss up between Stokely and Johnny Gill. Yeah, Johnny Gill has had a very legendary time. career. But Johnny Gill, I discovered first. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Before breaking my heart. It was my, 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 that's when I when I heard your voice, brother. Yes, you know sir. what I mean? So I gotta give you your flowers, yes, bro. Are right, we not done? We're not done. Uh top five R and B songs. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, that's a, always been a hard question for me because there's a lot of eras of R and B. So I have to go back to my favorite era, which is which is the, the early uh, 80s and 90s era, but like mid mid 80s. Uh, um, I would say "Can You Stand the Rain" is probably my number one Ooh. favorite R&B song of all right. time. Um, and "Never Keeping Secrets" by Babyface mm -hmm. is one of the best mm -hmm. written songs and produced songs. Like it's it's just such a great. It's is such that the a, one he wrote? That's when I basically came uh, into. Do, 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 do. do you know that that was my entrance to the music industry? I got to play that little part. Do, 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 do. No way. Wait, that's you playing it? No, that's Why Babyface. Why Why that's you Babyface, but that was my first job for him, was to play behind him in his band. Oh, okay. So, oh, wow. do, do, do. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. he got the Soul Train Award that year for that song. And you're I in the band the playing. And he allowed me to play that. that oh, band, that's that. that so you know there was a there was a whole year of being part of his squad that I didn't wasn't you know I wasn't even John B I, I had Jonathan B was my name at that point all my all my demo was Jonathan I still hadn't dropped the the, the you know half of my name yeah. but um, yeah Congrats. okay so let's get Can't back send to the rain um, Can't send a rain never keep a secret, never keep a secret. Um, yeah, so and this is just kind of off the head of I said never keep a secret because like I said that's the whole story of me cutting my teeth in the industry mm -hmm. um um, Breaking My Heart, uh, Nick Condition, mm -hmm. absolutely one of the greatest songs from the arrangement. No, there's, there's no, the music is never going away. It's like live band music. Yes. The, when was that ever, like, other than Earth, Wind, and Fire and, and, and stuff like that in terms of ballads? But it just, like, you know how Reasons is like Earth, yeah. Wind, and Fire? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. Uh -huh. it's, just, it's got that horn yeah. thing and it's, it's very just memorable. Yeah, memorable. Everything you hear. Bow, bow. As soon as you hear oh, yeah, no, no. I mean, everybody start going crazy. It's rap. Yeah. You're spilling drinks. I mean, bow, exactly. Bow. As soon as I do that, bop, bop on stage, that's a call out. they know right yeah. away. Oh, that's pretty brown eyes. So, yeah. yeah, that's up there big time. I mean, why not say my, my, my? Because it is one of the. Why not? Like, it is one of the greatest written songs. And talk about uh, personifying what it feels like to be grown. Even though I was so young, that's a very young. grown up record. That's a grown up it's a very record. grown up the slickness record. Slickness of that, the yeah. way that it sounds. Yeah, it's very the direct. Rhythm, the drums track on that is so. I mean, it's so smooth. Yeah. Just the rim. Is, 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 that, is that Kenny G? Like, Kenny G. I mean, are you on the, come on, it's so you got classy. Kenny G in the it's building? so classy. Yeah. It's just like you know. Yeah. So and like, it was a, and it was, I won't say a lifesaver, but. It was the defining moment for Johnny Gill yeah. coming out of New Edition. Oh yeah, because rub you the right way, mm -hmm. we were gonna we were gonna accept it because yeah, it, it was Johnny Gill. But it wasn't right. It wasn't, but it wasn't stroke. It was, <laughs> <laughs> 
That was a hell of a stroke. Uh, what, what, what'd you say, my name? Hey, dude. <laughs> stroke. That was a hell of a stroke. But the dancing, stroke, the right dancing, dude. the dancing, though. He was, he was dancing. He was, he was, he was <laughs> dancing. <laughs> It was like I was like, we'll accept it. But oh, then when that I like, like that. I wanna be your farewell friend. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Be the end. 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 Be the Sunshine. Yeah. Hey, O'Neal had them things, man. Hey. Alexander O'Neal had them things, man. Yeah. I can never give myself away. Because when I'm next to her, oh. you lose one race reaching now for my love. Come on, son. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, wait, wait, when he sings, though. Yeah. Right he sings. That's fine, that's fine, bro. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, so let's yeah. do this. Mm-hmm. Let's make a let's make a let's make an R and B Voltron. <laughs> we just we just got a new nuance added to Woo! the to the R and B Voltron. So this is what we're gonna do. It's it's vocals, it's styling, it's it's what do we call it? Emotion. Now. Emotion. Emotion. We got emotion now and performance. We're gonna take these four things mm-hmm. and build an artist. We're gonna start with the vocals. Who are you taking the vocals from? Oh my god, that's so hard. Um, mm-hmm. Marvin Gaye. Oof. Marvin Gaye's vocals. Marvin Gaye's vocals. Is it? It can, can be someone that's that's not living. No, no, you're, no, no, you're, no, you're, no, you're Marvin. Is, yeah, yeah, I think that's honestly my favorite vocalist because it, I think it was the subtleties of his Absolutely. swag. It's just like yeah. Michael Jackson. It was a very rhythmic person. You know, ah, 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 yeah. all that stuff yeah. along with all the the smoothest girl close your eyes. Very just, you yeah. know, he's got the, so much texture to his voice. Mm. But I think what made him so amazing was the rhythm behind it. Yeah. Like what made Marvin so, was this very similar thing. But he was not as, not as much of a, an aggressive rhythm person, as much of almost accompanying himself. He's like a, he's like yes. an instrument. Yeah, he's there were multiple like songs doing, in one. I'm doing yeah. the guitar part. Yeah. It's like almost like a, like a yeah, guitar part. Absolutely. You, you do the horns and, you know, he'd yeah, be, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it'd yeah. just be like, okay, he's doing the horn parts and he's doing, yeah, yeah. So you'd hear a vocal on the left side while Absolutely. he's singing, and it's you know what I mean? then it's there. It's almost like that's yeah. he was the first one to do that, really, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, and now that's all over our music now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what else? Were those equivalents? One of my Jesus. favorite things that you do. That's one of Walk my favorite things that you do. <laughs> I love your answer tracks. I love your main vocal that you're doing, but all these. These, these answer the, the things. Flying. Like, yeah, yes, the flying. Yes, the flying is just, it's just yeah. it's, it's beyond. Just dude. the compliment. Because nobody sings like that. I'm telling you, man. Nobody sings like that, bro. When I first heard Sam Smith, I, th- I thought, there's a tank fan. There's a tank hmm. You know, spend for me. For the Come on, man. I, so I mean, it's, he don't tweets. even sing like that no more. I got so many calls and tweets. He doesn't. Thinking, he kind of went away from like it. A, Female now. No, they you know thought I mean? that that was my record. Everybody thought that, oh, Tank got a new record out. Oh, and yeah. I was like, I do. Oh, a couple of them. And then when I heard the record, I was like this, oh. Yeah. I see. <laughs> yeah. I see what's Didn't going on. Did you say that he sent you a text that was like, what's we had up? Talk, we had talked on oh, DM that's one time. Up, man. That's and I, I said, man. Do you know who I recently love, made, love, an, love made an acquaintance doing. to that was just a huge, I should have mentioned him because he's a huge influence as well, is Maxwell. I met, I met him very Special. recently at the Diddy party in Vegas. And, uh, Man, it was a really special moment to to just shake a hand and, and look a person in the eye and be like, "Yo, man, you, thank you." And likewise, it was the similar. He's a camaraderie. fan of music. Yeah. He knows, yeah. like, as much as you, as much as Maxwell looks kind of like he's in his own world and kind of se- separated. I mean, because I mean, I think for for me growing up, Maxwell was always like this mystical character you know yeah. what i'm saying like he had our oh, he brushed his he teeth had in a the video thing. he just brushed his teeth he was just yeah, singing and he brushed his like, teeth and we were like, <laughs> like who, who gets that off he was just in a different place. that's a fuck y'all about, you know that's a fuck y'all <laughs> gonna brush my, my teeth, teeth while this beautiful the, song is playing and doing, yeah. Yeah. Know, so it was shots yeah, maxwell was, was really, you think that like he's just off into his own thing and doesn't need to worry about the rest of the world but he knows 
He's paying attention. He's paying attention. He's a fan of music. You know what I'm saying? That's Absolutely. what I appreciate about Produced by money. Sade's producers. Yeah. I mean, come on. Like, that shows a lot of taste and a lot of already. Okay, so yeah. we got the vocals from Marvin. Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye, um, Okay, so the vocals we got, from Marvin. We not, now we need to get the styling. What do you want your artist? Who do you want your artist to look like? It's time to get fly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's time to get fly. Um, ooh, I mean, it's, ooh, I mean, wow. All right, let's, let's say, uh, just because for me, it's kind of like, uh, I kind of, uh, I stole a lot from, what was it, 1991 Babyface? Tender Lover. Tender Lover. Babyface. Tender Lover. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's already yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, the pompadour, yeah. kind of a little bit mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. vibe, and then the, the clean essence of like wearing kind of like cleaner, kind of upscale yeah. clothing. Back then, I loved I loved the deal style. I loved Babyface. Yeah, no, it was very GQ. It was very yeah. GQ. Yeah. Very and GQ. it wasn't, it was, we weren't afraid. Like, when I saw him live, it was, he did three suit changes and then his show, and I thought it was very fitting. It just, it just worked. How he yeah. did it was swag. I was like, that's how you, that's R&B, oh. yo. Yeah, that's R&B. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's R&B. Yeah, yeah, it was a voice to man, baby face, Tony Braxton show. Golly. You know what I mean? I'm sitting here. Oh, that's a lot of record sales. I'm watching Tamar Braxton, little baby 16-year-old Tamar Braxton sing backgrounds for, you know, and I'm going, wow, okay, this is, I'm, then I see her grow up to be this artist, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I watched them, that whole thing happen, like, from the very beginning. I, I caught the end of, um, I caught I caught the uh, riding the wave of breathe breathe again. He was riding his. Shit. I watched him make waiting to exhale. Oh, oh. come on, man! I was is, there. Is this champagne I, I was, in here? I was in the next studio. Uh, or has he poured it all? He poured it all. He poured, poured all the champagne yeah, first. Yeah, Mike it's Jackson, just, Madonna. I watched him. I watched him, dude. I mean, I you know I could. I watched him work with Elder Barnes. Did you ask him what secretary was? Because that's not an actual secretary. occupation. <laughs> I know a secretary is, but I don't know if a secretary, secretary. is an actual occupation. Secretary, that's a, it works. Of course, I would have asked him. Secretary. Hey, Kenny, what the fuck is a secretary? secretary. <laughs> well, man, you just, you just got to make up your own words, man. You know, <laughs> I'm face. I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, face. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> so, stylings, very, very early R&B GQ from Babyface, mm -hmm, vocals mm -hmm. from Marvin Gaye. Where yeah, are you going to yeah. get your emotion from? Where are you going to get your heart from? Well, that's, oh, man, I wish I would have, because I'm going to get Babyface. Who drop it down the, to their knees? I'm, come on, man, that's nobody, I mean, Kenny's the greatest songwriter ever, bro. Like, I'm going to give him all the props right now, just because there's nobody else who can make you believe them with a love song. Sad uh happy i mean back I, i'm talking about in the 90s like there was in the late 80s i mean when you think about tenderoni you think about on our own bobby brown you think about can Johnny we talk Gale, my 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 can we talk it's Kevin campbell yeah voice um, the man yeah, it's, yeah it's voice the man i'll make love i mean uh what was it uh, uh end of the road end of the road um like the finding moments in my life of growing up and having you know, uh, girlfriends and breaking up and having songs that were reconciliation songs, getting back together to, you know, songs that were kind of uh, just half playing in the background. When you it all at the bay face. You know, all that. You know, it, 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 was, it, was, it was how I cut my tail. Like, as an R&B guy, there's nobody that I would want a song from. Emotion. Written. So, just, can yeah. you write me a song? Yes. Yeah. Uh, to your point, bro, I remember being at the underdogs and um, and Babyface having this song that he recorded on this group. Mm -hmm. We had a Hellify singer in the group. As yet. No, I'm not gonna say the group name. Oh. Hellify singer in the group who sang the hell out of the song. It was a Babyface song. Sang the hell out of it. And it was like, hmm. It was, you know, a bunch of trick, trick, you know, a bunch of twists and turns, you know, and, and athletics, you know what I'm saying, and, and the vocals and all yeah. that, right? And he was like, Babyface was like, okay. And then Babyface sang the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not all the yeah. acrobatics, no, no, not no, all the no, no, no. 
twist and turns. All the feels. All, all the feels. The feels. Yes. All the feels. Mm -hmm. It was like it's a great artist to pick for him. Oh but my see, god! All it's the like feels. the way that you express yourself, even when you speak, bro. It's like you—you're a very charismatic person. So mm -hmm. it's like there's there's a lot of um, emotion behind what you say because you're not afraid to say how you feel, yeah. and because you're able to express how you feel, people get where you're coming from, mm -hmm. and they 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 receive that. Yeah. And that's that's a gift, man, because um, that means anything that you say. You know, it's it's gonna turn that statement into something else. It could be some the smallest little statement, but um, the way that you say it mm -hmm. now all of a Gross. sudden is yeah. is what is makes it so special. You know, so I feel like we all have our own little fingerprint we could put on those those statements, our own way. We each have that, on, you know. But uh, just there's certain ones that just stick around, like can't get that you can't even wash that off the wall that fingerprint is there yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. it's just because it's so it's just he just put the, the stuff he, on he it. just puts the stuff on it <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, the right word so the fourth piece Baby, of the, of the, so the of fourth the piece is performance oh who are you taking the performance from? well i mean chris brown to me hey like, well, yeah. i mean <laughs> on, so you, you can do all that you and then you can do all that and yeah. do that <laughs> And you could tumble not and dunk. Not many people who could fly across the stage, oh, land, man. and not be winded and Amazing sing. Amazing! Oh, I mean, the most. I think if there's gonna be a Michael Jackson of our, you know, of our, in this era, he is our Michael Jackson. I mean, one hundred percent. You know, I would give it to Usher because he's been just as um, resilient of an artist to be mm -hmm. able to withstand all of the, just all of the all things the times, that, yeah. that the times and how everything's changed and he's changed with it and mm -hmm. he's evolved. And, Another incredible influence on me, Usher, as a singer. And, and, uh, so, yeah, I mean, like. Voltron. You got Marvin. Yeah. Babyface, babyface. Babyface, babyface. Got you got Kenny and babyface. Kenny and babyface. Yeah, right. <laughs> and Chris Brown. Lord Jesus. Yeah. That's a hell of an That's artist. That's a hell of an artist. I don't know. I just can't think the look thing kind of sh shook me because I don't really know what an artist should look like. But I just remember when I first started as, as an artist, um, I was paying attention to the the slickness of, of what yeah. was happening at mm -hmm. the time. And I think we, it's really okay to get back to that, y'all. Like, let's get back to because in the 90s, we were slick. Okay, boy. We was not nice afraid to put on, on. Yeah, some yeah, nice clothes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, the fabrics feel different. That's what Bad Boy was like. We used like. to call them party shirts. A yeah. party shirt. Because you put on a nice shirt go, to go to yeah, party. Yeah, you couldn't get in the club with just anything. Couldn't, no. Oh, you yeah. couldn't. You, yeah. No t-shirts allowed. Yeah. yeah. Put on a party yeah. shirt. Yeah. Put on, yeah, put on your shit. Yeah. Party shirt. Okay. <laughs> AB would say, put that shit on. Put that shit on. Jay has a... Yeah, 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 so I got yeah. I got a special segment. It's called I Ain't Saying No Names. Mm -hmm. Will you tell us a story, funny or fucked up, mm -hmm. or both? Okay. <laughs> but the only rule, you just don't say their names. Okay. Oh, I could have done that with the, the Diane Warren. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, Diane. I mean, to put you out there like that. Um, all right. Hmm. Who do I want to expose right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's your segment, my brother. Who do I want to expose? Oh, man. Um, you know, it's it's always crazy because you go through the business and one lear one definitely thing that I learned in the business, it's one thing to, to be in the corporate side of the industry. And to, I grew up kind of backwards where it's like I got the most credible powerful manager from the very beginning as soon as i signed to babyface i was signed to gallon and maury which was Ma michael jackson's management firm incredible you know what i'm saying so i got michael jackson on the same you know management firm you know yeah. what i mean managed by his manager it's like insane to start from that you know you said three level. names already right and then go. Well, no, <laughs> no, fuck well with that's you. fine because I'm gonna, I'm gonna traverse it. Not, that's not that's not who I'm exposing. No, I know. Yeah, fuck but, with you. But but one thing is for sure is like you know, when you experience that first, and then you no longer have that management, and you move on to other managers, and uh, managers are, they come in all kinds of different statuses. Mm -hmm. They got the super powerful high end managers who. Every label will answer their phone call, and then you got guys who are on, on the come up. Mm -hmm. Growing up in the music industry, I didn't know who to be loyal to in terms of like you know, 
do you stay corporate or do you just take people at face value and trust energies and vibes from people? Yeah. So I was much more of a truster rather than a person that was just take your word, oh, this is who you need, your corporate, blah, blah, blah. I was much more of like industries, like vibing with guys, you know what I'm saying? So if I, if I liked your energy, I might work with you and you might not even have on your, anybody on your roster. Yeah. You might just be a totally independent manager. Anyway, I ended up working with some, some, some guys during the time that I, I met you um, for that project. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it just really was not the move to make because what happens when you, sometimes when you work with people who aren't established, they use you as like, like almost like the main thing to base off everything. I mean, I had light bills put in my name and, and, and cars and, and things, you know what I'm saying? I found out about later on, like, $10,000 light bill. Why, what is this? I'm paying for this over here and this and that. It's you basically yeah. just a reason, a check. They're just getting a way to be able to make money and just living off you and not, not really bringing anything to the table. They'll be like, oh, such and such wants to get at you. It's like, all right, cool. But do I need to pay you for that? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's literally, you just told me, now I have to go do the work, right? So I have to pay you for that, right? All right, so that's 20% right there you know, off of whatever check that was to you for just giving me that phone call, which is, I guess it's, it's, it's fair, but it's not, to me, it's like, what what constitutes management? What is management? You know what I'm saying? In, in terms of like, what's the work that you're gonna actually do to bring to the table what isn't already there? Already on the table. Right. Yeah. Um, because this is my table. Mm -hmm. It's not our table. Yeah. This is my table. Yeah. Your person sitting at my so what are you going to put on? We're eating food right now, right? This is my table. We're eating dinner. I'm having some food prepared. What are you going to bring to the table? That's the main thing. So sure I, because it's at the end important. of the day, I paid for this meal to even happen. We're sitting at this table with a reservation because <laughs> I'm the one who had the reservation. Who had the reservation. And I have to pay for the bill at the end of the night. Yeah. So that's the thing. When you learn all this backwards like I did, with all the glitz and the glamour, I mean, I'm, gone, I'm sitting right next to Whitney Houston at the Grammys, my first year with Babyface, you know, for someone to love because we got nominated. That's not a regular situation. I learned backwards. Like, so I had to go from that to being like, okay, you know, you know, uh, not being invited to a lot of different award shows and wondering why and being like, oh, okay, you know, and just kind of playing the, you know, the, the back of the, the, the scenes a little bit more, you know, and just kind of appreciate it. But it, it was because of, of guys like the, the guy I'm describing who was just not in the industry but wanted to be, but was willing to just live off of me and take what was coming to me, you know, to kind of keep me at bay. And if you spend enough time dealing with people like that, you, you're gonna fall off. Like you, there's something that's gonna happen within you that will be not conducive for the industry. The industry is gonna start saying stuff about you, they're gonna talk about you there. Oh, you know what I mean? And so 2004, as I'm saying I'm stronger every day, ironically enough was the beginning of an era that the industry for some reason wasn't feeling me. They were like, well, oh, that's cool, where's baby? You know, I don't know what they were thinking. But it definitely wasn't like our our song. Our song lately went hard. Um, I had other records on that album that were dope as well. I worked with Kenny on that album, but for some reason, that album wasn't as welcomed as other uh, uh, as uh, other albums of mine. And I didn't know if it was the promotion. I didn't know what it was. I just, but I, I really now know that it was the management that I had involved, the people that I had closest to me around me that were made that whole so i almost lost my house um i mean it's it's no it's management a, is tough it's a it's a real miracle that i i still live where i live because of the fact that uh, we were able to work everything out with with my uh my current business managers and stuff like that but it's it, it was a lot to have to to to, to bail myself out of wow. you know first i was the divorce of a high school sweetheart that i married you know like straight out of high school trying to didn't want my life to change so I tried to marry her, and that was a bad deal. So we, you know, we got divorced, and right after that, you know, it was like 
three years of being sort of in this limbo place where I was like, because of these managers and I was just really, I was mad at the music industry. I was like, I've, I've already done, I've already sold platinums. What, why do I have to keep proving myself like this? I just want to celebrate the music now and, and do me, you know? Um, but it was, there was a lot of, a lot of voices around me at that time that kind of being like, well, they just, I don't know, I can't really get people to bite on this. I can't, you know, I don't know if they're feeling it. Promoters don't really, you know, it's like, what? Hold on, man. Back off. Maybe it's, as soon as I move those people out of the way. They were like, hey. And, and, and I, will, I will say the defining moment was when I met my wife. Um, I had already known her for like 10 years before we were romantically involved. But basically, she was started off as a friend of mine. And we kind of established ourselves, you know, more than that after after knowing each other like in liking each other and flirting and all that but it was it was the one thing that it kind of i related to her so much i was like why don't you just try to get me some gigs like you try you know she was like all right well cool and so we it was that kind of out of necessity because we were both so disenfranchised with, with management and the whole idea of giving so much power to someone yeah and then they could take it for granted do whatever steer you into essentially where you don't want to be um, yeah, so I was like, man, like let's just try this, and we've been rocking together ever since. And I mean, we turned my brand around, man. We we turned everything around. I mean, everything that we've done has been independent for the last fifteen years. Wow, so it's been crazy. I bet I've been able to stay afloat and uh, more than afloat. I mean, I'm one of the hardest working men in the army. Oh, yeah, yeah, you get that. <laughs> you gonna see John B's name yes. on that show. We just on had, that, we just on had that a, bill. a beautiful, beautiful tour we did at the City Winery. I was telling yeah, you, you know, we yeah. both love that venue. And the fans just, it's just such a, an incredible opportunity to reconnect with my fans. You know, the, the COVID took us out for 18 months, man. We wasn't gigging. So it's just such a blessing. We know. Oh, we, know. <laughs> we know. We all know. He's like, yeah, we, you know what? Hey, man, we're going to wait it out. <laughs> you know? Dry, yeah, yeah. I was like, I got to get on the road. I was like, come on, I got to get on this road, man. This is, I was just, I was really disappointed because I had just um, done a record with my man Donnell Jones. We, mm -hmm. we got in the studio and we did the song. I played him the record um, on the road. We were on the road and I played it to him. He's like, man, I like that. And I was like, you do? I was like, let's cut this. Let's let's get it. So he was so cool about it, man. He sent me the file right back. I was like, let's do this video. He came, to, shot the video with me, man. I was like honored, man. And it was really a, a, a you know an honor for me to work with a legend like that. So, yeah, shout out to Donnell Jones. Shout out to we Donnell We need you on the podcast, Donnell, 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 Donnell Jones. Donnell Jones. Yeah. That's who, yeah. This is where you want to be. Yeah, yeah. This, this, is, like, this is where you want to be. Money. This is what he, he's one of us. Yeah, I mean, he's absolutely. He's what he does. So that's why it was a it was a huge blessing to have him come bless me on that that track. Understands the name of the record. Yeah. Uh, wrote and produced it myself and um, shot that video. Man, it was like it felt real good. Like all right, this is something new. Put this out and then COVID hit. So it's like yeah. you know we had another song that we put out called Priceless as well. We did a video for that as well. So check them out, man, if you haven't checked it out. Uh, Understand and Priceless are available now. But that kind of the whole COVID thing kind of shut the album process down. Yeah. It's just like, all right, what do we do now? You know, um, what I ended up doing during during the uh, the uh, the whole the panoramic, yeah, <laughs> the panoramic <laughs> the pandemic panoramic. Um, was uh, I, I did these online performances, man, which was was really cool. I found a really cool venue downtown. It was like a loft kind of energy with like dim lights. We brought the you know, we brought the crew with the cameras and we just, it was a multi-camera setup. So it was like, it was, it was shot well, you yeah, know, like yeah. moving cameras, a little movement, you know what I mean? A little panning. And we had a little, you know, mock audience kind of just maybe 10, 15 people show up. Um, and uh, we, we put that on and, and we, every, every month I, I got in touch with my fans. I was like, what do you want to hear this month? You know? And it, oh, you was going direct to consumer. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, we, it yeah. was it was a great way to kind of test myself too. Like, all right, I haven't done this one in a, lot, in a long time. Yeah. Let's break this one out from the first album or whatever. So, yeah, it was really really fun. And um, some of those songs that I actually dusted off, you know, dusted right out of the crates. I was like, uh, I was like, man, I, I was scared to sing this one because the range was different. Back when I was nineteen, different you know when you I mean? was young. 
But boy, it's like it's good to sing those songs, right. man. You know, right. and and bring those back. And now some of them have actually made it into my current set now. So, so it's a fun time. Well, well brother John B. John B. Uh, Mr. Bucks. Man, yeah. big Bucks. Big, big, big Bucks. Bucks. Big that, R&B that was like Bucks. that was like a game back in the day, right? <laughs> money, baby. No whammies. Big Bucks, no whammies. Big R and B Bucks. Okay. Yeah. Um, you uh, one thing that you know. One thing that I've always been impressed about you is, you know, along with your hum- humility, you're just extremely gracious. Cheers, bro. You're just Thank extremely you. like, mm-hmm. you know, it's always a smile and it's always like, well, at least we got water. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like you're all, you like, I'm, I'm definitely the glass is half full. For like, sure. I'm yeah. definitely that. But sure. you're like, you're like my mirror image, and you're probably oh a step my further. God, than yo, I wish you could hear my new gracious. song that I have. I'm about to put out. Yeah, it's called "Waiting on You." Right? Mm-hmm. Man, you're like the number one influence for the song. Oh wow! And you are the the person that is the reason why I felt like that. Yes, it, it, there's so, there's only so many people I can say can reflect an emotion that's similar like this, and I hope that's a it says how much you've affected me as yes, an artist, you know, Absolutely. when when you can relate to someone so much that it's like, you don't have to try. The the, the grown man, John B, has, has been around the tanks, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and taking some notes and being like, nah, I'm, you know, when you look, when you curl the weight and you, you could be like bent over and kind of like, no, nah, you put your yeah. arm back yeah. and lift it and you just know you're going to get that weight up, right? That's the way I'm approaching what I'm doing now. Yeah. It's a different confidence yeah. as a grown man at 47. Developed muscle. Developed muscle. <laughs> yeah. Well, without being physically. Yeah. Yeah. Be. We can't really compare that note. I mean, I'm, you know, but I will say I'm working on those things, yeah. preserving those yes, things. You know, he a part-time trainer too, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 I, I do Are you serious? I, do it all. I just I do randomly it all. got you. Hey, I'm trying to John B today, Let me try man. to tell you, man. <laughs> If I get man, this is it's, it's a wrap. If John be get a six me, pack, I'm gonna no, be out of no, business. I'm not pack. doing. We're not doing yeah, that. It's, no. If, if I take my shirt off on stage, <laughs> who's you know saying? No, I would say, never. Let's go to the gym. No. You would never ever see that. I think it's only happened probably one or two, twice, one or two times, man. Listen, I won't do it. You got the voice. You got the music. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got you got the bless persona. You, bless you, bro. You got it all, Respect, man. man. Um, we have been honored. Um, yes, sir. We've been honored to spend a lot of time with you, man. We just, we, I don't even, I haven't even been counting how long yeah, we've been here. We yeah, just this has been got to talk and vibe. And, what a vibe, yeah. and, bro, for real. And to yeah. hear your story and, you know, and to tap into, you know, just hear about all of these awesome legendary artists that you just came in the game and just tackled. Like, that's just, that's not normal, <laughs> man. That's not normal, at all. That's not normal man. Blessing, Salute man. to you. Thanks. And to you, my bro. Your, you're still your 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 ever growing career, man. We always see each other on the road, man. Yeah. It's always love. It's always a beverage, always. Yeah. And, yeah. and 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 I yeah. promise you, man, that is never going to change. Oh from man, here what a, you don't even so, know what that means to me, bro. Yeah. To run into you like this and have this opportunity to reconnect with you, bro. Because I mean, we we got history. Yes, sir. We've been rocking together for some years now. I remember when you first came out. I was in London, talking on radio, like I'm. I got this new single. I'm about to, you know, because we had just worked. Mm-hmm. It was right after, right after, not too long after your first, first couple of singles. Yeah. That we worked, and so you know they hadn't really gotten you yet over yeah. In, yeah. In, in London yet. They were on their way, mm-hmm. but it was just just starting to bubble. And I was like, now Tank is the future. Tank is the future. That's Tank crazy. Is, you know, lately uh, it's about to be. And you know, we made it to the top four. Top. It was a top five record in London. A lot of people don't, don't know that. That was lately made it. To, I went to TRL MTV in England yeah. to go talk about the video and the song and working with you and everything nice. like that. So, Sauce. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, flowers, I, don't, listen, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know who you get to hang out with. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, during your afternoons and just kick it with and get good information from, man. But at the RV Money podcast, me and my brother Jay Valentine. We got the kick with kick Mr. John B, B, man. Please yes. make some noise for my brother, man. Yeah, thank you. Ooh, yeah. R&B money. <laughs> <laughs>